app store. And check out our VIP card, interact with us in our chat room, and scheduling of our Radio Vegas Dot Rock shows, plus podcasts. It's all available on Radio Vegas Dot Rock's app. That's right. Okay, double dipping. It's Greasy Conversation. I know it sounds like uh, a second intro to some of you, but here's the deal. We had a very special first half of the episode. Welcome to the second half of the episode. The first episode, half, was actually at YouTube, Radio Vegas Rocks, all one word. So if you go to the YouTube channel, Radio Vegas Rocks, all one word, please pop a sub for the station. We did a special station youtube exclusive for the first half uh it was accidental but it was kind of cool so we hit up that other audience and to see the first half yourself coming in now don't worry i'm posting one contiguous i'm using that word right yeah united states continuous 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 is really the word i'm posting one continuous video of both halves of today's episode at greasyconversation.com uh it'll take a little bit for the youtube to process it YouTube's processing is like crazy slow right now, even once you upload something. So anyway, enough excuses. The full episode will be at greasyconversation.com later on. Welcome to the second half. If you get hungry yeah. for the first half early, then you just got to go to Radio Vegas Rocks, all in word, you just the YouTube wait. channel. You, you just got to wait, you impatient. Don't wait, though. Little weasels. Don't wait, because it's an excuse to go to the YouTube channel, and you should go to the Greasy Conversation YouTube channel, too. Just help us out with a couple subs. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, that's the submarine of news because it's deep diving, continuing. Uh, We've got BG. He's just right outside. Our guest that was supposed to be the guest from the previous episode, he's here today. Surprise. Welcome. And we're going to do the second half of the episode. Uh, Thank you all for coming in. Oh, awesome seeing you in the chat, Josh. No, our guest is just right outside the door. He'll be right Yeah, in. Josh, what up, man? Yeah, we have a secret surprise guest today that's actually the guest from last episode that couldn't make it, able to make it this episode. So, um, and then you heard how to hear the first half of this episode, Radio Vegas Rocks, all in word, YouTube. Um, and so we're going to just keep trucking with this second half now. Uh, welcome. What do you, you want to kind of feel like? Next? Well, I kind of feel like <clears throat> Weasel needs to be like a serious insult. Weasel should be a serious insult. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like, I, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't start, like being called start a weasel. Putting some conviction into it. Like, get out of here, you fucking weasel. Yeah, you if know? I was like, if someone like I cared about was like, this is weasel behavior, I'd be like really <laughs> hurt. I'd be I'm like, oh, a weasel. Really disappointed. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about uh, how like, serious weasel should be as an insult. I just like taking like kind of innocuous words and like making them be serious insults. I mean, any word for me, I feel like intent behind the word. Yeah, for is sure. Everything. Yeah. So like anything could be like a a bad word or a funny like bad words can be funny words. Yeah, yeah. Depending totally. on the intent behind the word, I feel like that's the magic. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like that's a forgotten thing sometimes when people looking just to cancel and outrage, and it really oh distracts God. from stuff that really should be outraging. Since and canceling. we're talking about canceling and outrage, yeah. Nick motherfucking <laughs> Cannon. They canceled Nick Cannon. I'm not familiar. Nick Cannon has been canceled. Yeah. What I don't happened? know if you guys know this or not, but apparently he had like a he was on a show with like some OG like gangster dude that was just like anti semite. Like he was a just angry black dude. And like Nick Cannon was like on this show like agreeing with him and shit like that. <laughs> so it's like Nick Cannon, bro. <laughs> You're like <laughs> Nick Cannon, bro, like Bad luck. Yo. But also, like... He, though, he's, like, canceled. He's kicked off of all the shows he was on. Is this from yeah. a long time ago, though? No, like, no, no, no. This, this, this just, just happened. Oh, okay. Like, you, can look it up. you can look it up real quick. Oh, that's this different. week. If, if you want to, like, like, if you want to look it up a little bit, like, this shit just happened, like, this week. While and Out's been canceled for, like, after, like, 23 seasons. Damn. Should be canceled after season one, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's be real. But Is this like, one of those things where he's, like, just passively agreeing but not really listening to the guest? No, nah, it's like I've, he, I've no, accidentally done that. No, he's he's listening to the <laughs> guest because he starts saying dumb shit like, like the thing is too like Nick Cannon has been like pushing all these race things like don't generalize, don't generalize, but then like this guy says all Jews run the banks and that's like they run the world and they run Hollywood and all this other shit and Nick Cannon's like yeah man yeah you know yeah 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 and I was just like what? bro that's like the, it's like you're literally going against everything that like. <laughs> You're supposed to be standing for right now. Like, Eminem was right. You're an idiot. 
<laughs> so lame. Yeah, Nick Cannon. Well, at least you know, at least Wild and Out is finally off the air. <laughs> like, thank fucking God. But like, right? he, he's even not a host. Like, he was a host on like Mass Singer or something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. He yeah, was yeah. the actual host for that terrible show, <laughs> Mass Singer, and uh, he is now being replaced. So. He, like, just basically got kicked out of Hollywood overnight. So it's Yeah, like, that shit happens, man. Especially, like... Yeah, like, especially now. Like, when you're when at that level... going down. Yeah, when you're at that level, bro, like, man, you better be on your P's and Q's. Like, I'm not even a quarter at that level. You know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't married Mariah Carey. So it's like... Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I think my girlfriend's better than Mariah Carey. Keep yeah. Keep shout out real quick. Like that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, fucking... It's just that, like, he's at a high level. So yeah, So we're yeah. that many eyes. Like, you better, be, you better be on your shit. Yeah. Like, you better not slip up. You know what I'm saying? Like, even now, like, I won't even make tweets anymore. Like, that's, that's like, about anything. But speaking of tweets, Twitter was hacked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. hacked the headquarters of Twitter. Took, like, 150000 in Bitcoin. Hit it with the so Somali. How, so how did they... I can't believe there was money involved. Because I, I, I kept hearing people say Bitcoin was hacked, but it no, was no, no, Twitter no. that was hacked. Twitter was hacked. And they Bi- used it to the, You access. can't hack Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. So anybody that ever tells you that Bitcoin was hacked, it's bullshit. And they don't know a what they're talking about. A platform can be hacked. Yeah, so yeah. if you leave your money on an internet website, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if your money is on a wallet that is an internet website, I will tell you right now, that website can be hacked. Yeah, for sure. Twitter headquarters was hacked. So admin tools at Twitter, the person who has all the admin rights, mm. they hacked the terminal of an admin at Twitter headquarters. So oh, somebody damn. that could go into your account and like edit something or change all your change shit. stuff. Yeah, they could basically it's like a master node for yeah. Twitter. They went in and took the top one thousand influencers and put one of the oldest emails in the book. Send me a hundred dollars and I'll send you back two hundred dollars. <laughs> so oh send me a god. thousand Bitcoin and I'll send you back two thousand. Oh my god! Damn. That was. And to just fall for that too. Yeah, like that, that that's the real thing. And then Twitter, and it's now become a national security issue where people were worried that like they were going to start saying like USA is launching a nuclear strike against China, and it's on all these motherfucking yeah, yeah. you Twitter's know social pages. They were yeah. like, this could have been like a fucking national security we issue. We could have been covered in Chinese missiles. Yeah, yeah. like in both both countries. Like we could be in nuclear war right now yeah. over fucking tweets. You get what I'm Damn. saying? And like this motherfucker's mainframe was just hacked. And they're lucky it was just some fucking it was probably like some sixteen year old in fucking Copenhagen <laughs> that was just like fucking like, whatever. Yeah. Just like, you know what I'm saying? Who knows yeah. where the person was at? But like and they just asked for crypto. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. They, they, it was a very small scale thing. Because one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in Bitcoin was literally fifteen Bitcoin, like it's yeah. not even like crazy numbers. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's not that, you know, massive. But what they could have done could have been like we could be dealing with World War Three right now if they right. did it the right way. You have Kim Kardashian, Joe Biden, Barack Obama. They had everybody's account but Trump's, and that's where the red flag gets raised. Interesting. <laughs> that's where the red flag gets raised, by <laughs> man. Because everybody was hacked, but everybody that was hacked, Trump wasn't. And they said he has extra security layers because he's the president. And I was like, well, that's at least good to know. They're not that fucking stupid. (laughs) Where they have the regular admin at Twitter who's probably disgruntled that has access to the president of the United States Twitter. That actually made me a little happy. That there was extra layers of security. Like yeah. at least he had the two authentic, the two authenticators. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, At man. least he had that on his account. Because here, uh, th- through this, I'm thinking, am I a boomer thinking that Twitter shouldn't be used by the president? Like feeling like this platform is too young and unprofessional for something serious like the presidency? Like no, even Twitter thought that and put extra security yeah. on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that that made me extremely happy because Jeez. I was like. If I if you just had Kim Kardashian Barack Obama's account right, and you posted some shit out there, like that alone would be crazy. Spread everywhere, but like, they had Kanye, Joe yeah. Biden, Kim, like if you look you at the names, the stock Elon Musk. Oh, Elon yeah. Musk has dropped the stock market with saying oh, yeah. I smoke weed. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right. Like and, and like the stock market's dropped like 500 points. So imagine if like you had all these people, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, took his account. Yeah. So it's like. Bill Gates, like Damn. between Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk, if they can't find the person who hacked Twitter, I really doubt our technological giants right now. Right? <laughs> yeah. If they can't find the person, I'm who haunted. Twitter, like, like, you, what is America best at anymore? 
Is there anything that we're number one in anymore? Like number one in uh, coming up with stuff that people reality fuck with. reality television. Yeah. <laughs> we're number one. We're number one in entertainment. That's for sure. We're the entertainment hub of the world. Yeah. Even um, like other markets that seem like bubbles, like Bollywood and South Korea, still are massively influenced by us. Yeah. And, I mean, I mean, K-pop as of right now to me is trap music. Like when That's I was in Coachella last year. For sure. When I was in Coachella last year, there was two things I saw that blew my mind and I realized I was getting a little older was the K-pop effect that it had on the crowd like how big the crowd was for the K-pop group Blackpink yeah like I still don't really know their music or anything but how large that crowd was was ridiculous you would have thought fucking Jay-Z and Beyonce and Eminem and Dr. Dre and NWA were like doing like a fucking reunion tour or some shit it was it was massive and the crowd was singing along in motherfucking mm. Korean. I was like, I didn't know this mother- <laughs> no, many people could speak a different language in this country. And right. they were all singing along in Korean. Like, yeah. it was like an entire massive crowd, like, ding tong, ding 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 ding. I, I can't speak it, so I'm not yeah, trying to yeah. fuck it up, but I'm just saying, they were singing along in Korean. Like, I was and there's just, all these videos that, like, teach you the words and yeah. in, in Korean characters and in English characters. Yeah. And so they were like, like, yeah, it was it was nuts. Like, I wish I had the time to market any of my music that hard where I've got, like, uh, lyric videos in other languages. Jeez. Like, <laughs> dude, like, the K-pop groups, I know there's a K-pop group that, like, if I actually, me and my girl were, like, just looking it up one day, like, researching it, and, like, honest to God, the guys weren't even singing. Like, they were just playing a song. Like, because here's the thing. It was perfect. Like, when these guys spoke... It was very broken English. It wasn't very smooth. They're singing. It's like the cleanest English I've ever heard. <laughs> it's like, so by the way, you know, it was just yeah, like. That makes sense. That makes and then sense. He's though. doing an interview. He's like, yes, I. That was. Yeah. I'm like, you pronounce those R's or you're fired. Yeah, no, I was yeah. just like, did he sing that song or did they get somebody else to sing it? And he's just showing up doing the interviews and the tours. Or it's like, can auto tune fix consonants now too? Yeah, and I, and I was. Yeah, I was just like, I was like, I know audio editing. And there's some things you just can't edit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't pronounce the word correctly, the only way I'm going to fix it with you saying it better is getting somebody else to come into the studio and sing it for you. Yeah, like, if you <laughs> miss, if you miss like, an R or a T or, like, constants like that, you can't just, like, post, like, that little uh, attack. It's not even just you can't just constant, pass like, that in. He literally can't speak the language. <laughs> yeah, but, like... <laughs> what, what if he, like... What if it's just that he practices... Like memorizing and singing the English lyrics. I'm sure. More than like ever having to speak English, ever. I'm sure he like martial arts that stuff. Yeah. Backflips. I don't know. Yeah. If, I, I mean, think I think that they're like that they got Trump as a regime. president. They don't care if it's bullshit or not. They're gonna <laughs> still run with it. So just make it look pretty and they'll buy it. <laughs> like that's what I felt like. It's Very make true. it look all the pretty though. Like there's so many uh, psychological manipulation things that you can do in music that especially affect people Marketing when they're in younger. Oh, Marketing for sure. You notice how like when you're younger, you would go for more angsty stuff, and there's certain bands that would, for a flash in the pan, just like totally give you that drug, but you'd forget about them later. Oh yeah. Because there wasn't anything like lastingly there. It just gave you the candy so hard. Yeah. I feel like all the classic candy techniques, like they read, uh, "This is your brain on music." Like <laughs> that, all of, I think it's Oliver Sacks. Um, they applied every chapter of that book. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, but the thing is, like, I'm a fan of K-pop now because every like white supremacist thing that pops up on Twitter <laughs> gets overtaken by K-pop. Yeah. <laughs> like, nice. Like, yes. Hell yeah. Like, they trolled Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, Donald yeah. Trump thought he was going to have a million people. That, it's like, there was a million people that registered. I'm going to have to do a speech outside. <laughs> it was all Dude, K-pop people. It was all K-pop stands, bro. So, like, he literally has all this stuff set up that his stage built outside. Like, There's only, like, a couple, like, 100, he was 200 people. so mad. Wait, bro. what happened? Trump thought that his, like, his, uh... His speech, first rally. His first rally since, had since over, yeah, shut down. like, uh, over, a, like, a million people were registered to show up. And it was like something like about four thousand, I think, minus. <laughs> yeah, and it was in was it in like North Carolina or something? Uh, it was like Oklahoma or something. Okay, like, so why actually, I think it was Tulsa. Tulsa, yeah, yeah I think right. it was yeah, Tulsa. Yeah. Why did you think all these people were going to show up for? Because him? K-pop stands pre-registered saying that they were going to go, so it had over a million registered applicants saying that they were going to go. But they're, but they're going for the K-pop thing. No, no, they no. weren't going. The it K-pop, was a troll. Like K-pop fans, Trolled all got it. together and started. 
Oh. Like, they spread it among themselves to, to register for this yes. event. Oh, it's that 4chan level kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But on, like, a Beautiful. presidential scale. Wow. Yeah. So they they literally... America. They trolled the president. Like, he yeah. was trolled as fuck. Yeah. Like, they made a press conference. They even addressed it. They were like, we didn't know that they were all... They, they, it was supposed to be a million people, yada, yada. <laughs> and then all the cable, like, it just came out. Like, it was just like, yeah, it we trolled us. them. All these videos came up. Yeah. Like, wow. yeah, we trolled them. We trolled them. So, like, he was hella mad, bro. There's, like, oh, they, yeah, yeah. like if you watch, like, any late night show right now when they talk about that specific thing when he gets off air force what his tie is off oh he yeah he looks he looks hat. miserable dude <laughs> he slams his hat bro yes. he has his bag of hat crunched up in his head <laughs> and he like slams it it was, it so was like it was like bro he thought it was gonna have a sold out stadium show where like four people showed up oh man <laughs> it was like it's like man it's like Fuck, bro. It's like, you, you, they can't be all winners, but... <laughs> yeah, I know, no. <laughs> But, yeah, like, anytime, like, something pops up now, K-pop will just, like, destroy it. It's like, weird how we're talking... You're talking about K-pop as this... Like, people used to talk about Anonymous. But, like, anyone could be Anonymous. There's, like, multiple Anonymouses. Yeah, yeah. There's, like, all these K-pop factions now. Unnamed in the shadows. No, they're 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 one single unit, bro. Really? Like, they're 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 literally in sync as a K-pop dance is. Wow. Like, like literally. They like all like, the people acting as yeah, K-pop. Yeah, like, like like if you. If it's you're like a an industry. Fan, yeah, it's like if you're a K-pop fan, and then like something pops up, like, you know, like. It's like big tobacco. Like, there was but something <laughs> that said like something like KKK or whatever. Like so like if some racist shit pops up, K-pop will literally take it and then post a K-pop video. Yes. <laughs> And it'll this just be a K-pop so video of like, like <laughs> you can just look it up, bro. It's awesome. like this is like a thing, That's like awesome. like a major thing. My buddy put me onto it because like, uh, my buddy OK, he actually has like a big fan base in uh, South Korea, so like, he was telling me he's like, no, bro, like he's like, this is a thing. <laughs> he's like, and they're like every single like if you don't do it, you're not a fan. So <laughs> it's Damn. like. Well, you know what I'm saying. So it's like I'm happy it's being used for good because it could be this is the same machine that sold sells merch. That sells posters and, yeah. and plush dolls of these K-pop artists. Yeah. So to see it used for something other than just corporate, uh, oh yeah, like you know selling Disney character merchandise, uh, is beautiful. You don't yeah. see you don't see uh, what's another like the Warner Brothers franchise making all the Looney Tunes fans attack Injustice. No, you don't see anybody. Honestly, you don't killer. see anybody in like America really attacking Injustices too much. No. I mean, we did have the riots that popped off for a while, but it was like. Those came, and then it's like nobody's even talking about it anymore. Well, the big problem with the riots were all the false flags, I feel. Well, so a lot of people couldn't be, or I meant the protests, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the false flag people starting riots to make the protesters look bad and make it feel unsafe to protest. Like, were, I didn't feel like I could join them safely because yeah. it there wasn't were, safe. There were, and the like, cops weren't protecting them. <laughs> there were only, like, a few riots that were, like, fairly small as far as, like, what you think of it, like, as an actual riot, you know? Mm hmm and then it's, it seems like once there weren't, like, riots the media could show on the news every day, like, they just stopped. Because protests have still been going on. For sure. Like, since that happened. But, you know, you don't see it on the news because they can't, like, make people look like shit anymore. Yeah, but, I mean, so. like, and the thing is, too, like, they used the freaking, I know for Philadelphia, my, my aunt was out there and, like, people were blowing her up. They were, like, they used, a, like, an image from, like, I forget what movie. It was, like, some apocalyptic movie. But they use that image of Philadelphia for this is Philadelphia right now on CNN News. Like I forget the movie it was. Biased much? It was like End of Days or something. But like yeah. they used that image from the, the poster, the movie poster. They used that image of Philadelphia and said Philadelphia is a, city. is a war zone. That's so now don't awful. get me wrong. I, I have a lot of family in Philadelphia, and they were saying that they were blowing up ATM machines with grenades in Philadelphia Dang. when the riots were going down. So there was some shit popping off out there, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't the picture that they showed. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, The totally. city was literally on fire. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, this like there's only rubble. And this was like, on CNN. All rubble. Oh, they man. used a movie <laughs> image. It said, oh, we were just doing that for... No, motherfucker. You're a national news station. Yeah. Don't show oh, a goddamn yeah. they fucking apocalypse. Know, yeah, I was like, Really? I was like, where's the DCMA strike on them right now? <laughs> it, is, it, is like, it is so gnarly, like, how out there and, like, just straight-up propaganda the news is. Yeah, like, oh my, my, my like, grandma watches CNN. I want to find, find what it is now, too. Like this. The, it's uh, especially CNN and Fox specifically. They've just divvied up our old people. It's <laughs> like my grandma is just as glued to CNN as Jay's dad is to Fox. Yeah. And it's like... 
uh, the same flavor and stuff, just the opposite flavor. Yeah. Like, oh, you guys are the strawberry milkshake and this is the chocolate milkshake people. But like the, getting them riled up over the same issues, just yeah, tinting yeah, totally. them slightly different. Like, oh, you're uh, more of a, you know, people kind of lean more aggressive and more passive. Just yeah, yeah. The, where your comfort zone is. And it's yeah. just like monopolizing that as yeah. news organizations. Yeah, no, and I was just trying to find it right now. Like, and I was just thinking about it. Like, so it's like we go from one, it's like basically we're rats in a maze or mice in a maze. And the reason I say that is because, like, all your attention, <coughs> coronavirus, all your attention, virus. It's like coronavirus wasn't even spoken about. And now it's like, all right, put the attention back on coronavirus. So it's like this, like, wishy washy, like, big hip like hypnosis spell that's trying to be casted right now and all they're doing is looking at our eyes yeah what are our eyes looking at exactly that's our eyes it's like following a big, it's it? like a big hypnosis well, have thing. your eyes look over here Yo, look over here there's video of fauci saying that wearing a mask is irrelevant it doesn't do shit okay mm. fauci literally said this in the start of the year he literally said that mask don't do shit so the guy who's like the fucking voice of reason for a coronavirus right now fauci said that wearing masks is bullsh- bullshit well, didn't he always say that it does protect other people? But like he said before, that's no, not no, no. He said relevant. like it does. It, like he's like the average person. Like unless, like, it, yeah, he said you shouldn't be wearing a mask if mm. you're just doing day to day stuff. Yeah, he literally said this. If you go look, follow, always follow the money. For there's sure. a bunch of deals that went down where people bought like a billion dollars in masks. Like there's like a multi billion dollar deals. That oh went yeah. down With mask, so like, America is a very opportunist. Yeah. Situation. <laughs> so you go spin a if somebody if there's a multi billion dollar deal going on with mask, you rest assured there's gonna be regulation requiring everybody to wear fucking mask for like as long as possible. Because now it's a fashion thing. Now people are buying designer masks, mm-hmm. buying masks like this, buying masks like this. Oh, I'll, I wear a mask to wear my outfit. Having to so, wear your mask just when you're outside your house is like the stupidest slippery I, slope. I'll be law. honest, if I'm outside like, I'm only wearing my mask when I go into a place of business. Exactly. Because, yeah. like, for one, I get it. The person at the place of business is dealing with people all day. Like, they're scared. They're afraid. So I'll give them that decency just because they're still fucking going to work right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I respect that. They're stuck but wearing it, even exactly, in solidarity. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, I, I, I respect that rule set. You know what I'm saying? And plus, business, 100%. businesses are private. So whatever their rules are for that business, yeah. you have to abide by. That's yeah, yeah, a point like, I've made, too. No shirt, Absolutely. no shoes, no mask, no service. I dig it. I'm not going to go in and start protesting your place of business. No. You have to work. You're dealing with it, not me. I'm here for five motherfucking minutes to buy some black and miles in the water. Right. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm not going to pro- like, so wear a mask at these places. If I go to the movie theaters where they open back up and they require me to wear a mask, I'll be eating my popcorn. So I'll be, my mask will be coming off, but I'll keep it on in the movie theater because I'm still waiting for movies to open. Because the day yeah, they yeah. open, I'm fucking going back. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't know if you guys know who Andrew Schultz is. If you don't know who he is, I'm giving him a shout out because he's funny as fuck. But he's like this comedian. Yes. That's Joe Rogan yeah. Yeah. I'm totally Andrew Schultz. Man. He's like the guy that says the realest shit from New York City. Yeah. Like the realest shit. But he's like, yo, man. He's like, you know, for the first two months I was down. But he's like, at this point, he's like, one of my boys got it, bro. We all get in the Rona. The ro- the Rona. <laughs> the, the Ronies. <laughs> I know. I've caught myself feeling that way. Like, I just want to get it over with. I mean, at this point, man, like, it's like, you know, t- you, we, used to, we actually used to make fun of people that had OCD. Like, that was, like, like having OCD was, like, oh, man, why are you so extra cleanly and all this other stuff? Now, like, the whole world has been, like, yeah. in this trance of, like, OCD. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, like, to be honest, like, it's, like, you're forced to change your life just because of what you're forced to do. But, like, yeah. I mean, like. And, and it's, it's extreme. Like, we, we, as we evolve, we start seeing grays and function in more grays. And every time humanity has been most stuck and most unable to progress it's been when people have been stuck in black and whites and absolutes yeah. and being absolute about sanitizer for example is how we started seeing upticks of MRSA and antibiotics not working when in the first wave of sanitizer hype and now we've just got the green flag to like as much as I have to be extra careful I have asthma I'm like an at-risk person I shouldn't be talking about give me the Rona already but if I'm using hand sanitizer all the time, I'm going to get uh, MRSA. If I'm just breeding anabactic uh, and resistant if you, germs. And if you isolate yourself and you're wearing a mask all the time, you're not getting what human beings do called your immune system. It's not getting the natural viruses from other people to fight. Yeah. Because the wo- we, are all, we are one. We yeah. are one. So it's like every human being and entity on the planet 
interacts. So you're giving me jabs, I'm giving you jabs, and it, it's all like communicating around. But we're getting stronger because of it. Because I'm sending you troops, you're sending me troops that fight certain things. So it's like we're we're building an alliance, yeah. so to speak, as far as that goes. So it's like we well, just it, look at the numbers, math, and science behind anything that you're being told. And if you don't understand the science, just look at the math. Always look at the math. Because math is usually pretty simple. It's usually pretty cut and dry. There's no calculus equations you have to solve. It's usually like a one plus one equals two. And if it's not two, then it's some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like <laughs> Yeah, like where's the like, balance? Where's yeah, the middle yeah. ground? So Where like, does this make sense? There's like so the many middle. anomalies, man. Like I have buddies that are calling me like, yo, I went and took a test at four different places. One person said I had it with antibodies, one person said I didn't have it, one person said I didn't have it, my wife didn't have it here, but she had it here. So it's like people are going and taking tests in multiple places and getting multiple results. So it's like one person even said one uh there's a story that's up right now that says a nurse uh tested the swab kit but didn't swab anybody just tested the kit and the kit came up positive <laughs> yeah there were some issues too because also <laughs> the thing that there's like multiple tests and tests when did these tests like come out when did they invent this fucking test how much how much ex scientific yeah. experimentation have they actually had with yeah. these well tests? that's why they keep no, even now they're coming out with tests that are like better than the last. Like that's like, my point. The so. last test was this shit. shit's still in alpha state. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, even yeah. in beta yet. For yeah. sure. So they're alpha testing the test. That's not even in beta yet. Yeah. And, and we're, making, here, decisions and we're making decisions. We're making decisions based on an alpha. Like, have you yeah. ever played a video game before? You try to judge. If you judge anything on its alpha state, it's gonna be bunk and bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not complete. So That's it's totally like different, it's like it's like. Judging a song after the first recording session. There's no <laughs> mixing. There's no tuning. Yeah. It's just a one take demo idea. <laughs> That's what this test is right now. It's like, <laughs> it's like an iPhone. Yeah. It's a well, voice memo. <laughs> And we're judging the test on the voice memo recording. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's pretty much what's going well, down. What makes me most worried is the fact that we're, y you could look at this as fighting a war with space aliens. Like the movie, um, uh, with the super, it's, it's not super troopers, starship troopers. But it's these, this alien's already here and we can't see it. We yeah. know stuff that affects it. We know stuff that kills it. And not only that, it looks and acts just like certain aliens you could say that we do need and live in our own body. Like you can't just wipe out your gut biome. No. And you, that hurts your gut biome to like you be too aggressive with things well, that kill that of, kind of you stuff. You can't get rid of your coronaviruses because you just killed your immune system. Yeah, that's the thing is that- Your I, immune system is a coronavirus. I worry that, <laughs> you know, after, after World War I, we crushed and, and kept down the nations that lost and World War II happened. After World War II, we uplifted the nations that, we, that lost and helped rebuild them and get them at eye level, and we didn't have another conflict like that again. We think of Germany as like another industrialized nation now, for example. And uh, I feel like we're gonna have to do something like that with germs in general. We can't just kill all the microbes, or we're or where the microbes will kill us even harder. Yeah, and we, we have to make a come peace up with, with them. And we can't just try to come up with vaccines all the fucking time, thinking that vaccines yeah. are like vaccines help. Yes, vaccines do cure things. Yes, I'm not saying that vaccines don't work. But it is not the end-all, be-all solution. Sure. Like, yeah, totally. We, we can't just keep trying to come up with a vaccine for things because two things happen. One, capitalism. So the vaccine costs more money than most people can afford at first. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it doesn't help you there. So there's like, got to be other treatments. Yeah, there has to be other treatments. Yeah. Honestly, like, I think at some point, like, once I, th I feel like once the, the current regime that runs the world is done, like... The Trump era, like, because all those guys are fading out. Like, one thing we know for certain is, like, death happens, and that's guaranteed change. So, like, once we're, like, in our 50s and 60s starting to become the generation that's, like, running the world, we're the last generation that understands the world without computers and yeah. high-speed information. Yeah. And now we're at this transitional generation where we've got information on our fingertips, <laughs> but it doesn't mean we know what truth is. Exactly. So it's going to be, I didn't realize, I thought, you know, with the inter, it, we, we all have a library. It, it'll be like when everyone learned to, to read and could finally read what the Bible said, that they were following these rules that the priests were just making up. Uh, and now we can, uh, we were able to create airplanes and machines and hospitals having libraries. It's like a library in our pocket now. We'll all have the right information all the time. I didn't realize that it would be so much misinformation to, to well the thing is this information is the modern is the, the modern war that's yeah it. yeah the modern war for it, like more money is spent on disinformation weapons and cybersecurity oh, weapons for sure then we spend on missiles jets like all of the like i went and looked it up yeah all of our money is spent on internet war 
like and literally people and outside of tech have no idea yeah and no, people yeah, with like yeah. a little tech background yeah, is just, just like a little bit like haunted I'm not even by it every day yeah, yeah. yeah. right <laughs> and the thing is too like i actually said that when i worked at apple i remember when they first started talking about cloud technology and big data i was like this is going to be a problem in the future because <laughs> when you have a large amount of information you can not only make predictions you can manipulate a system yeah if you have enough information on it and now 10 years later with big data and information all we have is numbers on a screen and people are panicking everything's yeah. on the internet like i'll be honest even the riots that are breaking out over the guy that happened in minnesota like it's literally just stuff on a screen there's yeah. no like eyewitness accounts there's no there's no human testimony mm. like yeah i know humans lie things like that but my biggest thing like if human testimony is what can get people thrown in jail fucking executed and killed by governments then human testimony still has value like if I can't find ten people to sure. cooperate a story, be at that's least suspicious. remote me loosely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, very yeah. suspicious, especially if it's at the scale that's stated. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. So it's like I always have like questions when there's no human testimony with things I see on the internet. Yeah, you know and and you should uh, yeah, you should be yeah. like yeah. At least willing to not accept all information you see right away. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, bro, I'm fucking accept no information yeah, until me I too. can get. I'm super at least, skeptical about everything. At least I get man. like fucking a hundred sources of of cooperation. Yeah. But if there's one thing on that equation that knocks it off of the cooperation list, I don't know if I'm really fucking with it. That's my whole thing. I got a fun thing related to that. Uh, that's a little bit more lighthearted. We reported earlier on Carlos Ghosn the CEO of Nissan, uh, who was leading Nissan through this uh, agreement with, I said Renault before, I don't think it's, anyway, uh, he was going to go to Japanese prison for like embezzlement and like improper money practices. And he escaped in a musical instrument case to, um, <laughs> to his home country that doesn't have extradition treaty with uh, Japan. And the way it looked from the outside, it looked like this is someone just trying to escape persecution. But he publicly argued his case that um, it was a nationalistic coup, that mm. people inside Nissan wanted to take Nissan back uh, under Japanese control and um, scapegoat him and throw a bunch of money decisions uh, on him and like basically cook the books in his name and highlight stuff that he did that was like normal practice that they could spin a different way. Oh, the other shit. CEOs yeah. are doing exactly the same. And now people are looking into it more and he's had a chance to present more evidence. And it's looking like he was totally right. He was totally framed. Man, it's looking like that crazy, so far. Man. It's still coming together. It's still coming to light. I'll tell you right now, man. It's, it's, it's one thing, man. Like when you deal with big business like that, it's like they're all fucking cooking books and shit like that. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. He's 100% right. And like Japan's probably just running from China. They're like, fuck, man. They're just running their own businesses. They're just taking everything, and yeah. it's fucking working. Plus, trying, it, trying to just, like, make shit up. They're yeah. just like, yeah. yeah, we'll just do whatever we want. Business no, but, they, but they run everything. Like, yeah, yeah. Facebook is China. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. only people that have access to Facebook in China is, like, government officials. <laughs> like, Damn. you have to have a security clearance to access Facebook in China. Not only that, but it's Nissan. It's not Toyota. It's not Honda. Yeah. Nissan has been, like, up and down in, like, the ethics of their operations and the the quality of their cars, I mean, uh, depends on the generation. And even when I've, they've had higher quality standards, but like they'll let design just slip for years. They have these like dated looking cars before refreshes and just like a lot of weird decisions. And they were hella failing before Gone came in. And Gone refreshed the brand, brought back the Z that everyone missed, and just got in touch with the public and like made Nissan what he Nissan is good what, today. What T-Mobile did, like the uh, guy John Ledger for T-Mobile. Uh -huh. He like came in, like T-Mobile was about to be like out of the game and like now they're the top dog. Yeah, he so. did that. And then I feel like he made some enemies uh, doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that makes sense <laughs> to me. But <laughs> it's like, it's like, that's the thing, man. Like, like I said, like always follow the money. Like when you follow the money, it's like you just kind of look and see, all right, who comes in and you see who is going to take over. Yeah, for sure. And who they were related to. And it's like, it's always some fucking, some bullshit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it all comes out in the wash. Yeah, man. It's like, it's like, but you know, like I was saying like a little bit earlier, it's like once our generation comes into power, I feel like the whole system, we're going to like, because we're in a different era right now. 
Like we've blessed the industrial age. Yes. We're in the early stages of the information age. Like yeah. we're in the information era. This yeah, is and a it is early in it too. This is a, yeah. This is a different era. But like, imagine being at the beginning of the industrial age, where like coal miners and actually building railroads and shit like yeah. that. Like, could you imagine the fucking conditions and like what it must have been like? Oh, but yeah. then once they got built, Terrible. it was like chill and it was cruising. I think about that every time the internet goes out on this broadcast, and every time <laughs> Facebook doesn't connect because of some update that I need to update something else in the background or reconnect, restream, yeah, all that. So it's like, like, oh yeah, this is all new. Yeah. So like, once we well, now that we're <laughs> in the information era, like quantum, I feel like the quantum era. Like once we really start honing in quantum computers and quantum yeah. technology, like because it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, it's like yeah. right now we're still in the mainframe stages, but like 10, 15, maybe 20, like I say 20 years tops. Like, the technology we have right now, because right now we're in the gadget era from the industrial age. Still. So, like, yeah, yeah. The, uh, all the stuff we have is just gadgets still. Like, we're still just gadgets. We're barely moving into universal yeah. gadgets that it's all exactly, software. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. once we hit the quantum era, like, I mean, the, the, well, then we're talking about probability math. And when you get good with probability math and statistics like these quantum computers can crunch, exactly. you can see the future. No. I mean, that's how people uh, not only crack passwords, but like predict weather. See the past yeah. Because you can literally take all the information on the planet and actually see what happened in the past. And everything that humans have done can be boiled down to excelling in pattern recognition. Yeah. It's the one thing that we do above every other animal that such a huge percentage of our brain is blank and prepared to be molded to do is we spot patterns and we plan and quantum the way probabilities can be layered on top of each other where you just see this landscape and just oh that mountain go to that mountain that's where the data is that's got the highest value you just can't view things three-dimensionally like that in a regular computer no it's an, it's insane no. that I mean, capability i mean basically our brains are quantum computers based on the way that they compute information. we're definitely parallel processors yeah. there's definitely yeah. more than one brain yeah. in there arguing yeah. with you so like the fact that we are doing that like when the one thing about quantum computers i will say is that right now the current machines there's no chance for skynet to ever happen yeah. oh yeah yeah but with we, a we quantum got a computer <laughs> Especially room temp quantum. As soon as we can do quantum at room temp, that's going to be cold fusion for data. Yeah. Yeah. So I will say this. When that happens, I mean, here, now to go down a conspiracy train, I have a buddy. I'm not going to say his name. But he gave me a really good synopsis on what happens. He said, when you become president, you don't just get nuclear codes because nobody gives a fuck about nuclear codes anymore because nobody's launching nuclear weapons. Yeah. Like, that's just not realistic. Like, For we're at sure. a point in the world now where we know that we're not trying to destroy the planet. Yeah. Like, no, a nuclear we've got weapon, surgical drone strikes. Yeah, yeah. That. That's what I'm saying. Like, a nuclear weapon just isn't effective. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that era of stupidity, like, passed us. Thankfully, whether it was aliens or just scientists being like, yo, motherfuckers, you're going to destroy the world. <laughs> <Right>? Even <laughs> North Korea, it's just a bargaining chip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... The fact that we're that, he said that what you do get is access to the quantum AI that you could basically ask questions and it could tell you how to get to things that you want to happen. And it's like this supercomputer that's like Google, Amazon, and a bunch of different tech people. It has everybody's information from all of the internet, from every country's internet, from every photo, like everything that exists on the internet, on the internet is in this computer's mind. And it's a quantum computer. And it's, it's, it's basically the atomic bomb of a quantum computer. Because the first quantum computer is going to be used for military. Use. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, That'll that's, be, like, developed for military. It, first, it, yeah. and, it's, and it's already developed for military, yeah. is what he was saying. So, like, when Trump became president, the deep state lost access to this quantum computer. So that's why all this, like, dark pet of, like, rings and shit like that, they had access to this deep state, however they had access to it, so they could, like, set it up to stay free. They could, like, what do we need to do to do this? And the quantum computer would give them answers. But now that fucking homie came in office, I'm not saying this shit's true or not. I'm just giving the yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the the perception of it or the the, the 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 point of view. And he was saying that like once he went in, he's like he's a bad dude. But Trump never drank. And I actually watched Trump's documentary, like his the rise of Trump from like his show and all that stuff. Dude, he's been on television when there was only three television stations. He oh, was on the crazy third think, television yeah. station Damn. ever. He was like doing interviews on television back in like the fucking. 60s, yeah. it's like early 70s, but like 60s, he was like, right when TV like became a thing, like he was on. It. You get what I'm saying? So it's like his experience on television 
is like a kid that's been on a computer when they're 70 years yeah. old on an iPad. He's very you know comfortable I mean? with the public. Exactly. And that, that so, medium especially. Yeah, so like, and then like, he definitely can't be racist because the first person he hired for like his first four companies were black dudes. Like his first driver. Oh, that's security such a guard. distraction just to pass yeah, yeah. him off so as just a like, racist. Yeah, so it's He's just not like, that simple. No, <laughs> it's really not. And it's like, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's another factor. Mm-hmm. And it's like, he's married to a woman that's not even from America. So it's yeah. like, you really can't be trying to say he's racist and his wife is not even there's, from this country. There's, it's like, it's plus it's a distraction and kind of a blow off when what you really want to do is highlight what a specific thing, a specific policy or a specific thing he might have said might have affected a specific race or a specific class group even more so. And yeah. like, instead of looking at the nuances and seeing how we can actually like do something about this or highlight this, you just like pass it off as racism. Yeah. It's just such a cop out of yeah, actually honestly, making and, a change. And honestly, and that whole pass it off as racism thing, I feel like that's just part of like, a, that's a symptom. Like I was saying earlier about symptoms, that's a symptom of a larger problem, which yeah. is cancel culture in general. Mm-hmm. Like, Right now, that Goya beans, for real, Goya way. <laughs> We're going to help the culture by getting rid of fucking Goya beans. Like, come on, people. Like, what the fuck is going on right now, yeah. for real? Like, like, Goya beans. It's such a distraction. That, anytime, there's, yeah. anytime there's any, like, thing like that about, like, a corporation, I'm like, what the fuck are y'all doing, man? Yeah. Like, they just want your money. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not understand? Yeah. Like, and the fact that they're booming right now, I guarantee Goya Bees' stocks probably just went up. Yeah, you know man. What I'm like, I'm like, any company, like, yeah. don't even get involved in that shit. Yeah, man. Fuck them. Between all right? Goya Bees and Mick Cannon, man, I don't know if I can fucking handle anything <laughs> else, bro. Oh, and yeah, it's like, if some guys are getting in trouble for shit they did 11 years ago, I'll be honest, I used to be a heavy drinker. Mm. So if I was judged on shit, I did it. Nine years ago. Yeah, forget oh, that. Yeah. It's not fair I'd be in prison. Yeah, 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 You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if you were to That's bring major. up, like, I'm just happy I wasn't social media savvy back then. So right. I really put shit on the internet. So I can still but get a I job. if I was to fucking yeah. drunk tweet back in the day, oh, yeah. like, I'd probably be blacklisted for some of the shit I was probably saying. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, blacked out, drunk, piece of my night together. It's like a fucking movie. I'm over here investigating myself. Yeah. So where was Kyle Cunningham at at 8 p.m. <laughs> yesterday? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like, well, I believe you were here. I'm like, all right, thanks. Oh, I've done that, man. I've had to, like, yeah. re- retrace the night. Yeah, like, some fucking Batman in my fucking life and shit. So right. I was just like, you know, so I was, after that point, I was just like, but damn. I was like, so what if this guy was just drunk one day with his buddies and forgot to delete the tweet? You know what I mean? Life destroyed. <laughs> so, like, and, and, like, this era we're entering into right now, like, I'm going to tell people right now, cancel culture is not the answer because the only thing that happens in that society is an illusion bubble. Yes. It's a bubble illusion. It's like one of those movies where it's like, oh, we all live in paradise, but they're all being eaten by aliens after like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, like yeah. it's like so crazy, like murder, like everybody's dying. Yeah, yeah. When you're living in some type of paradise situation, it's always everybody dies you know what I'm saying yeah yeah yeah, because it's not it's not balanced and you're just (laughs) when you just silence people that you don't immediately agree with yeah and don't even give a chance Uh, but on on the other hand you even if you accidentally platform someone that ends up being super awful that's on them they they present themselves that way you're just hosting yeah and here's the thing too like and like if it's gonna incite violence or like cause people to go hate crimes and like bombs or like terroristic like actual violent shit then that's okay because it states in the Constitution you do have freedom of speech, but you don't have freedom of speech to have people go kill people. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's that that's like that's built into the structure of it. But like, just to be like, yo, so and so is a douchebag. Like, oh, ban that person. Yeah, he's we should, against. We like, should this always now. be allowed. To, he's against douchebags. Yeah, we should always be allowed to. to yeah, criticize. yeah. So it's like it's like this whole like eggshell type of thing. Yeah, and then like the platforms themselves. They're very selective with what they deplatform too, because it's still like you still get some bullshit that's up there that shouldn't be up there. Yeah, it yeah. should be deplatformed because it's not popular enough. They don't give a fuck. And yeah, they're yeah. distracted. They're distracted with all the baloney that people are crying yeah. about that yeah. they miss the the stuff yeah. that should be policing. And honestly, Twitter needs to worry about themselves right now because they get motherfucking hacked over here <laughs> and shit. They <laughs> yeah. give it up, motherfucking Obama, Joe Biden, and Kanye West, right. former president and two people currently <laughs> running for office. That's fucking funny. potential first lady Kim Kardashian. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, who else is on that list, bro? It was insane, dude. <laughs> when you actually look at the list, it I'm reads... I'm not to look it up, yeah. Bro, it literally reads like a fucking holy shit list. Like, yeah. Like, they had to remove blue check marks and deactivate authorized pages from posting Jeez. because Damn. they were afraid. Like, and it became a national security issue. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's naughty. It's, uh, it's funny how much it parallels, like, early telephone and early electricity. Like the war, of the currents, or early Ma Bell. That there's 
so many like epic corporate stories in early tech that we're like reliving with social media and people like when people like get on a high horse about social media being evil i just giggle and think about the people that used to smash their tvs be like this is killing our children we're gonna have oh, yeah. zombies with these Rocky televisions is the devil meanwhile it's the same machine that let us know the atrocities in vietnam and stop our country from doing that yeah well, it's the same every, machine and here's the thing that people like every technology has pros and cons for no sure no matter what like the airplane great for travel <laughs> it's also dropping bombs for sure. you know yeah. what i'm saying like it's great that i can fly here in four or five hours but it's also dropping motherfucking bombs yeah, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. no one like, should have airplanes yeah yeah you know so yeah. it's like it's always those things like i was talking to the other day i was like you know because we've developed and figured out that quantum entanglement is a thing quantum entanglement is like the wheel to an airplane as far as teleportation and portals go so once we really yeah, get yeah, and yeah. understand quantum There's entanglement, so much potential you can make a, like a portal or a gateway quantum entangle it with another location and walk through that portal and then like boom you could be fucking a trillion miles away instantaneously even transferring information that's the thing if we can get data to time travel if we can get data to teleport if we can use uh, entanglement to transmit data faster than light that uh, you might as well move your body because no, if you uh, can move we can we can function and manipulate I'm a, I'm matter with data that. yeah apparently this is what one of my crypto buddies told me. The reason why Huawei was attacked the way it was was because cell phone companies have this, like, treaty. You can only release a phone that is only so far technologically advanced within a certain time frame. So, uh, like, until 2025, you can have a 50 megapixel phone, all uh, right? Well, but because you have to get parts from all these different places, mm. like, because basically all phones are made of the same shit. Yeah, yeah. They basically made it so you can't get materials you need unless you're within this treaty. I have some inside dirt on that, though. We, we live in an era where so much of the tech is open source and so many of the chips, even in like an iPhone, have like public data sheets yeah. that you notice when an iPhone comes out, iFixit tears it up and they tell you like, this is this chip. Oh, they got silicon from this company and put it in the same chip with this one. They get the backstory in these chips. That stuff is in the hands of people that are completely on the outside in places like India and China no. that can make clone stuff with and but make no, no, deals. But, that, that's what but they're, they are held a generation or two back as far as parts availability with these suppliers. Yeah. So it could maybe a generation or two. No, no, but the, but, what he um, was saying was um, basically Huawei left that treaty. I have some inside dirt on Huawei. So yeah, for sure, they, they can, they can uh, steal. They, they're known for corporate espionage. They've yeah. probably stolen... Uh, designs for silicon to just well, bake it themselves saying, and go past these providers that they have the ability with a quantum phone and the way that the quantum phone works is quantum communication so the way their cell phone works is for like space travel uh, he didn't get into details how we knew they had this phone <laughs> but like basically if i'm on pluto i could call you on my quantum phone and my communication would instantaneously travel to you well i see where he's thinking this because china recently did a test from satellite to ground of uh, communicating with entangled particles. Yeah. But that was um, unbelievably primitive compared to that description. That's what I said, To the I point where, too. like, we'd have to skip from the Model T to, like, jet engine time. No, it's a way bigger jump than that. It'd be, like, from... If that's no, transistor, be, this would honestly, be, like... Honestly, like, it'd be from finding, like, gold to making that a transistor. It's like that's a perfect the, example, it's yeah. It's finding the base materials that would actually make it. So it's like finding the plastic in the gold. It's not even yeah. like, we don't even have the transistor. Oh, this conducts. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a perfect example because <laughs> what they did was it was a stream of entangled particles and a yeah. laser. It was like a fire hose of them compared to what you'd have to manipulate in a part. But yeah. part of what you said, uh, I have some inside dirt on Huawei. I am working on a completely unrelated project with someone that's also working on 5G network uh, infrastructure Damn. and we'll even showed me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got a minute on that but I'll, I'll have an update by then probably too but he showed me a board we're under a non-non so I can't like talk about it too much but uh, like a really advanced multi-layered board that handled power delivery and uh, 5G networking on this board and uh, as part of what we were talking about and part of the level that he's on with it the big reason why we had to ban Huawei is a lack of security control because Huawei's got routers that American businesses have bought because they are cheaper than like a Cisco router just to find out that there's a chip in there that was phoning home and just sending data back. And there's no way of 
knowing that China wouldn't hide that same thing in the die of a chip, that you would never be able to like reverse engineer that without a, a microscope. And, and even then, you don't know what code it's running when you microscope in there. They absolutely did. That's why, I mean, like... Huawei's been espionaging it, like, yeah, yeah, from, no, from 10 years ago. I mean, like, that's that's modern-day warfare. Yeah, and they've been caught internet. so much, too. Yeah, so yeah. it's a wonder even so many corporations well, no, have used honest, that here. If they've been doing that, I guarantee you the government is basically how stupid they do some certain shit. I guarantee you there was some administrative corporate office that probably had some crazy quantum technology... In a, in a system that they were probably saving money on their servers because they yeah. were fucking being cheap. Like, we'll cut cost here. We'll spend a trillion here. And then they probably got the docks on fucking all types of shit. I'd That's be why really China's amazed. fussing right now. Yeah, I'd be really amazed if there's any um, <laughs> modern American frontier technology that China isn't even, isn't, uh, doesn't know about, doesn't even have a company, like, working on yet because they've infiltrated, like, all, all of our companies, which, you know, right. I, um, it intellectual property in america is worthless anyway the patent system is inherently oh, yeah. flawed and i mean if you look at it like i mean nikola tesla always gonna drop tesla's name yeah. always uh i mean he was even given credit now for his patent on the radio like mm. they've even went back and like retroacted like patents he didn't have they went back and gave to him just because of like did we rob this guy so hard for sure <laughs> <laughs> Man, we've got to actually tie it up. We we blasted through this. I know. This half yeah, deliciously. Man. I know, oh, man. I love it. <laughs> this is like the quickest one ever. Right. Might be like a right. like time machine. Were you coming right. back in September? Yes, yes. So that's actually scheduled. Once, yeah, once once uh, Spotify opens up too, I think we'll be. It, I want to do it after Joe Rogan and Alex Jones. Yeah, so we can talk about that. Because, pick it. because not just did pick it, but I want to go deep, deep. Depending on like, Restream.io, we might be on that there too, probably. Because no, they've been ahead of the game on most of the platforms. No, they're, 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 like, they're definitely top of the line, 100%. Mm. That's oh, yeah. your friends. I have to give you credit because the first time you were on, you were like, you got to go to the OBS. Got to get on that because I was doing it with two cell phones at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always like up on the tech. I'm even doing virtual music sessions right now using Discord. Cool. So I just because yeah. a gaming server has such high quality audio and video because you're streaming gaming, I was like, let me do this for music, and it's been like super dope. You have like yeah. jam sessions or like collaborative oh, no, sessions? I actually like run like mix sessions. I've even recorded vocals somebody recorded from their cell phone into like from their cell phone into like my computer system. Nice. Yeah. I can't believe what you could do with cell phone mic vocals in a quiet oh room my now. God. I, I did a voiceover thing Sick. from cell phone audio. Yeah. It was just done in a quiet room from, like, an iPad. Yeah. It came out great. Yeah, it's insane right <laughs> now. It's insane right now. Like, and the thing is, the technology is just getting, like, so, so insane. Like, once they make quantum computers, yeah. you'll just be able to think music. Like, it literally just, <laughs> That'd like, be dope. Yeah. just sit out and be like, these are the keys I want. It's, <laughs> it's funny when the worst, most indie, like, or, or like, low, not necessarily worst. I mean, like, the cheapest, most bedroom artists are still like tossing it through isotope is you can rent ozone through uh splice splice yeah so you just rent ozone for a month and master your album <laughs> it's like uh, in everyone's hands it is <laughs> but uh, the thing is the thing is the tools are available now but it's like everybody can pick up a hammer but can you still build a house is that's the thing yeah, yeah. it's it's, good, so it's gotta, gonna be a renaissance yeah because so you gotta know how to use the tools now sure. that everyone's got a fast car we see who can really race yeah exactly that's why I'm liking the fact that, I'm, for me, I'm loving it because yeah. it's like, it puts me on a playing field that like even 10, 15 years ago, I wouldn't have been on. I'm not in LA working at a major studio. Yeah. Now so you can like, just let your, yeah, you know, I could the study skills here. Like, yeah, exactly, it, yeah. with the mind skills. It's not, I'm not really limited by, by the tech factor of it. I'm stoked on collaborating with you tomorrow, what we yes. might come up with, especially yes. learning from each other and comparing some notes. No, 100%, yeah. 100%. And like, yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm actually definitely curious to see what we, uh, what we come up with. Yeah, I'm going to bring some gadgets. I'm oh, going to yeah. see what uh, what I can see you create with some cutting-edge tools that I've built to see how they work with yeah, an actual yeah. producer uh, busting things out on yeah. them. Plus, I love tech. You know, I do stuff yeah. with Roland, Isotope. Like, totally. Isotope is probably one of my favorite companies on the planet. Worthy. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously. Isotope, UAD. Give up plugging shout-outs. Yeah. Try to get more sponsorships. <laughs> yeah, plug them all. Yeah. Well, you got one minute to plug Neumann. You're in the yeah. Norman Club now? <laughs> Norman, Norman <laughs> Manly Box Box, Isotope, Earthquake Audio. Shout out to Vic from uh, LV Sound. He hooked me up with the Earthquake Sound System. It's basically a guy who owns the patent for, like, subs and, like, every speaker system that exists. Yeah. It's a beast. Nice. 
Yeah, it's Familiar called the Earthquake. Hello. Earthquake sound. Power brand. Uh, I would shut out Apple, but fuck dongles. Um. <laughs> 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 yeah. I got to holler. Ach- Archeria was really cool at Nam. I hung out with the Archeria. Oh, yeah, Archeria. Archeria's yeah, dope. Yeah. I actually have their, I actually have their, um, their suite, their vintage instruments. Ah, it's really good. I had the old version of it with my... Uh, I have the Lab, Key Lab. Oh, I'll, I'll plug you. Because yeah. I have, like, fucking, I think, like, ten licenses for it. <laughs> yeah. Hot dog. We're, we're wheeling and doing... We're yeah. doing new media, you guys. Stay tuned and keep following yeah, along to see where we one. end we, up. We, we tried to hit them all this time. Went on deep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time. <laughs> so stay tuned to RadioVegas.rocks and uh, keep enjoying. And we've got the Grungy Faucet coming up next. Check it out with Kevin. Hell yeah. And Oh, wait. You, now it sounds like I'm actually leaving. All right. See you guys. <laughs> bye. Think something was missing. Cool. All right, so I've got some uh, patching together. I said I meant to, but I couldn't steer. Up. I could never steer the conversation away by playing Maxwell. Oh. <laughs> so I kept thinking about it. We'll turn the mics on and we'll we'll code code open, cold open, cold open time. How cold is your open if you're actively announcing it's cold? It's not that cold. Here. No, we've got a lukewarm opening. All right. Liking the sounds. Cool video. Oh, yeah. The whole point of this cold open is to make sure. It's like right at that temperature, you don't want a bath. (laughs) You know? Like where it's not warm, but it's not cold either. It's just that, like, you know, that just gross water feeling. Gross open. Just like it's the gross temperature. (laughs) Yeah. Slimy opening. No, we're definitely broadcasting. So now going to start the feed on radiovegas.rocks and we are connected that's right you did it once again <laughs> yes i need the tight oh yeah That's-Bow. massive massive yeah. microphone issues nah we've had massive than that yeah that's true <laughs> mild Chill microphone issues. Oh, like like when that is. like when that one dude came in and ripped the microphone off the off the table and then beat everyone to death with it. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, I forget if I put it this way, like that one, it just it stays how oh, it yeah, works. Yeah, they just like falling out of the. All right, we're gonna discuss how we set up the mic stand situation. We're gonna go All through episode. some dank news. <laughs> we got B Genius in the house. Back. Yeah. We're back. That's Bad. right. Live effects. Returning. First time this season. Yep. PG 3.0. That's right. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> awesome. So we've got fun articles, and I know you've come with, like, a hunger to talk about some stuff. Let's yeah. start goofy, and we'll, like, wean our way serious, probably. Yeah, definitely. Totally. Also, um, I like to front load plugs. If you want to just, off the beginning, holler about what you're up to and anything you want to promote right now. Oh, well, uh definitely say probably the latest uh, project is uh, the project I've been doing with the uh, owner of Cirque du Soleil and John Lario, uh, Mobius 8. It's an artist named Delaron who is a, an opera singer who just dropped a project called Parabellum. It's available on all platforms now where it's opera and hip hop. So nice. Oh, nice. Think Fifth Element meets like... Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Like hip hop. It's pretty crazy, but it's a dope project. Uh, oh, there's man. a bunch of songs Fifth that element, we had worked on. That's yeah, so cool. So it's uh, the first single dropped recently with the music video. Um, yeah, so it's on uh, all platforms. Delaram is the artist's name, and the song is called Parabellum. Awesome. I'll, Sweet. I'll link it to this post uh, This later. Actually, I can probably even throw that in the news notes. So yep. Cox is working on the internet in the area, too. So we're going to... Uh, ignore any comments about the stream coming in and out. August 1st is their, the, the date they said they should be done. But, of course, the whole thing's going to be, is recorded and going to be at greasyconversation.com. Just click on this episode, and that's where the final uncut thing will be posted. Otherwise, it just pops back up, and we might have a more than one video for this episode at first. That kind of thing. You've been through it before. We're doing it. So what do you have lined up for us first today, Greg? So first, it's been, you know, it's been a while since we've uh, seen any mythical beasts. So a recent 
photo of Nessie surfaced, <laughs> or what someone said was Nessie. Of course, they're gonna claim it. There's no, there's yeah. no head poking out of the water with a long neck. Yeah. And the old horse face Nessie looking all cute. Nope, it's just like a, a big hump of a fish. <laughs> and then, so someone spots it early on as the, the photo's making its rounds on Twitter and says it looks like a Wells catfish, which apparently can grow to eight feet long and be over 300 pounds. Damn. So they're massive fish. And, but it, turned, it looks like this one actually is shopped. Because oh. someone matched up the pattern on this, like, what is supposed to be Nessie. Oh, this one's shopped, yeah. Yeah, Cause that's so they matched up the pattern to another uh, catfish that's in a photo with the same pattern, oh. which you can see, like, as you go. Dang, this thing is not small, though. Yeah, they're yeah. fucking they're huge, small. man. Well, we know more about outer space than we do the ocean, so there's so right? many, like, I mean, there's so many creatures that are in the ocean that have never needed light for millions of years and, like, yeah, those have things built-in are radar. Nuts. So. Like, they found, like, a... Uh, and it's like the blackest material. Or like they keep finding like more material that's yeah. blacker than the last time they found it, but yeah. it's all creatures in the ocean. Yeah. Then it's like you have like giant squid or an actual thing, you know? Yeah. Like there's actually yeah. like 30 to 40 feet, like huge, gigantic, yeah. Yeah, huge squid that like could eat ships. So. The amount of intelligence octopi are supposed to have to like pick locks and break out of containers. Yeah. Oh, Them yeah. Them and crows. Like any of the uh, grackles, crows, um, and parrots. The, those two bird families and octopi, I think, are, like, the next animals that should get voting rights. Yeah. Well, I know for a fact that uh, octopus, like, can pretty much, they're, like, called the un, the un, uh, what is it? Like, you can't lock those creatures up, really. Yeah. Because they can, like, turn, like, they can put their entire body because they don't have any bones. Yeah. So they can, like, slide through a crack. Climb through the yeah, bone. Yeah, it's like yeah. a tiny, yeah, like a small yeah. hole like this. They'll yeah, just, like, yeah, pop right yeah. out. They'll get popped right out of, like, almost anything. There, there was even a story about this, like, octopus in an aquarium that would wait till everyone left. It was closed down at the night, and he would sneak out of his tank and crawl over to a fish tank, eat some fish, and then crawl back. <laughs> wow. Like, they couldn't figure out why a fish were missing out of this one tank for a while, and then they, like, check the uh, images. Yeah, that's, octopus. that's, that's, uh, they're smart, and they man. also have DNA that it's not matched to anything else on the planet. So that's yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, they don't have any genetic code. So, like, by all states of mathematics, it's an alien species. I looked right. into that one a little more. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone had a rebuttal that uh, there's a certain way that all, um, you know, there's prokaryotes and there's eukaryotes. Yeah. I forget which one is which, but one of them is the other, has the other inside it. It's like a cell within a cell. And all of our living stuff besides bacteria, if I'm remembering right, you holler in the chat if I'm messing this up, um, is that kind that we are. And octopuses are that kind of cell too. So even though they're really different and branched off a long time ago, they still come back to something that seems uniquely an Earth way for a cell to be. It seems like on other planets, you're, uh, it's almost like a fluke thing, but it might be one of those things that is like the normal fluke way life gets this way. Well, I was gonna say that, uh, yeah, usually when anything that's an advanced concept, when you break down to the fundamentals of it, it's the same universally. Like, for example, all stars are the same. Like, yeah. you have planets that, it might be a binary star system, or a tri even a trinary star system in some positions, but for the overall factor, it's still planets evolving around a star, no yeah. matter what. Like. It might be a dwarf star, or dead star, whatever the case may be, or but a that's pair of stars, yeah, but, that, but that's yeah. still like a certain uh, fundamental to how it all works. So to think that life would be different as far as the base fundamentals go, I don't think it would be that. Yeah, it's like there's only so many ways it probably can come together. Yeah, but yeah. but also it's weird that um, you could have it not even based on carbon. Oh yeah, no, yeah, you, it can be based <laughs> on pretty much. I mean anything. You know, there's planets that rain glass, and then there's planets that are made of diamonds. So it's raining like, yeah. diamonds. We <laughs> talked about what was it last episode? Yeah, it was like I think Neptune. yeah, we had yeah, raining Neptune. diamond no news yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it is Neptune. It is. It's a couple planets actually. I yes, there, yeah, there's one. Like, there's one that rains glass horizontally. <laughs> so like, <laughs> that's not <nutty>. even <laughs> literally like sheets of glass. Yeah, of flying around the planet in like horizontal that's awesome. motion. When I hear that, I think about the difference between PlayStation games and xbox games playstation <laughs> you're way likely to have 
horizontal sheets of glass. Maybe it's just the UI. I'm thinking that. That sounds so PlayStation to me. Yeah, I can see that. So last, on, this, on this last uh, thing of this Nessie article, fl- stroll down to the bottom and see the guy who is the head of the Loch Ness Monster Discovery Project. I see how they matched patterns. See, if you look up here, that pattern in this guy's picture matches the pattern of the one photoshopped in the lake. Yeah. Apparently, these, like, they're, they're patterning on the back of these uh, the fish is pretty unique. Oh, no, you passed it. Yeah, this, this pattern situation, yeah, that's definitely the same photo. Yeah. But if you scroll down, you can take a look at our buddy Adrian Shine all the way to... Like okay. right before the ads. There this? we go. Okay. <laughs> he looks like the head of the Loch Ness Monster Discovery Project. Like, if yeah. you say like, "Hey, there's this dude who's the head of the Loch Ness Monster Discovery Project," like that's who you picture. Is that the same guy on the cover of the book Moby Dick? <laughs> <laughs> he is also a yeah. He's like, I got Moby Dick, so next right. is the Loch Ness Monster. Like, <laughs> he's got a gray beard, and his mustache looks like two smaller beards going in either direction. <laughs> Then he's got, like, the long gray hair that goes in the ponytail behind his head. Yeah, the sport coat seals the deal, though. <laughs> yeah, like, totally. He's got a three-piece suit situation, like, with a vest, and he's on a boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's man. what he's got to say, too. That's some gangster stuff right there. Long right? sleeve like, shirt. You can yeah. see his cuffs. He's like, water doesn't touch me. I'm, yeah. I'm faster than water. Yeah. Right. Well, I think we need to, like... He's every... definitely not getting in the water, though. That's <laughs> 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 so he finds it. Yeah. He's not getting any close-up shots. Oh, yeah. And that's if he can set above water, that's it for him. Right. Like, he's not diving in. He's not jumping in that water. <laughs> I mean, that shit's probably green screen anyway. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude. They photoshopped a the guy from this 1500s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this put him in a three-piece oh, suit. Put him in front of a lake. Jesus Christ. Got yourself a Nessie Hunter. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we do. There is always like a resurgence every couple years of these like mythological creatures. Yeah, I like, mean, right now though, it's just like there's so much shit going on in the world right now. Like, I don't. I think everything's coming out now. It's just yeah. like, yo, what do we got left? You know, I mean, Unsolved <laughs> Mysteries is back on Netflix. Right. Yeah. I mean, you just got. It's like everything's just coming back right now. Yeah, so you, you, need to get some, you need to get some chupacabras. Yeah. Yeah. Some Mothmans. Probably vampires. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, who vampires. Knows? Zombies, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. Can Bigfoot. Big Bigfoot, Bigfoot, yeah. Bigfoot, man. Bigfoot's never going away. I think we're looking at multiple big feet. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I think we can't claim this is all just one fella. Yeah. No way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and the Himalayans and in the, and in right. the, and in the Canadian wilderness. Right. Yeah. Like, he's just really getting around. Yeah. Or they just have, in the caves, they just have teleportation, you know, devices oh, so in the say, caves. They have, like, teleportation so just, technology. Yeah, so they're That's just sick. walking through, like, a, 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 a intergalactic uh, gateway. <laughs> so, like, they're not even from this planet. It's actually an alien sighting. What if? What if, <laughs> awesome. what if the Bigfoot? Furry ass alien. What if Bigfoot, yeah. they're the time travelers? So they travel back in time and, like, try not to get spotted. They're time travel campers. Or they could be time traveling forward in time. I want to time. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I want to time travel naked. <laughs> it's like the ultimate thrill. It's just time travel totally like, naked, barefoot. Well, well, that's you know the only way you can time travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, oh! nothing comes with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, and then think about it, too. They always say, like, you know, ancient civilizations had way more advanced technologies and stuff. Like, what if cavemen actually were time travelers like Whoa. you never know so uh we're gonna send you back in time but uh we can send your clothes we don't have to send you naked but they charge by the pound your clothes are heavy we can't <laughs> send you with like a sheet or anything yeah, it's, it's, it's just, not they're not gonna pay though? for it, it if, if you think about like let's say terminator when they do time traveling yeah and then the robots, they always come back naked no yeah. matter what. Yep. Yeah. So it's like... They can't send clothes in that yeah, universe. It might only be, like, <laughs> biologic material that you could send. You might not be able to send, like, non... Because if you think about it, if you could just send non-biological material through time, like, what's stopping somebody from sending somebody a weapon? Like, your future self sending yeah, like your past self, weapon. like, a nuclear weapon. Yeah. Like, if you can't actually send um, non-material... Like, we're talking hypothetical time travel rules. Yeah, yeah. Like... If you can only send, like, 
biological material. It's like a law. Yeah. Like you can't be you're not allowed to. Yeah, or or it just it just doesn't work. Like oh, yeah, when you yeah. go to the quantum field at that level, it's just like only biological material will be able to recalibrate itself. You know, because it's just what it does. It's like this weird yeah. code where it's like, oh, a person. Well, this person <laughs> needs to be alive right now, so it the universe just calibrates itself. But when it's non organic material, you know, you might be able to send like a pear back because it's like it's a fruit, so yeah. something that's living, but like you can't send back like a laptop. Like manufactured material. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I can't send an iPhone back to like the caveman. So they you know. develop these flesh laptops. <laughs> that you, just, you squeeze like a go-gurt into them to feed them. And there's like a tray you have to empty out, like a cat litter box built into it. Yeah. It just shits oh, into its own dude. internal cat litter it box. Could. No. It could. That'd be so great. Yeah. Yeah, that's some yeah. like love, love because, craft because, laptops. Because I'm starting to think about it right now. Is there any like a time travel period where somebody sent something, just sent an item back? Or was it always with a person that had to, it had to go back? I think most stories I can think of is always a person. Yeah. It's I never like, just, like, an item that's sent through time. Yeah. I love the idea of uh, just doing it with data. Like, if we can just hold on to an object that people in the past will be able to keep talking to, then you just, like, travel through time normally with that object. And the further you get into the future, the more you can keep hearing voices from the past and, like, talk back to them. But they have to be where you left this one unit in, like, this room that stops changing time, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a. Uh, I'm on to something. Yeah, well, no. there's 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 a movie that I just watched on Netflix recently called Time Lapse, and it's kind of like that, but it's a cave that has like the what is it, the Holy Grail. So it's like the key to immortality. So there's been cave. a time travel cave before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that does, and, and no, that's why I got this idea from because uh. this time travel cave still has cavemen inside of it. So I don't want to ruin oh. the movie too much, <laughs> but like they're going in looking for like the way that the Holy Grail or like the the water that you can live forever. Last is that the closer you get to it, the more time stops. Whoa. Uh, so, like, when you this get is to the premise. water, when you get to the water, every second you're in the cave is, at first they thought it was, um, like, a day, but then they realized that every second was a year. Oh, damn. So, like, so like you walk into a the cave day and goes walk out by. Like, a thousand so, Yeah, like, every years. second is yeah. a year. Damn. Yeah, so, like... They were in here for like two days, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but nice. the cavemen from back in the past are still living in there. So That's like, gnarly. because these cavemen like haven't left the cave in over, you know, for the cavemen it's probably been like two years. Yeah, they're like chilling. But like, yeah. these humans are coming in, and it's like when you see the movie play out, it's like all these different layers. But it's <laughs> definitely a cool concept on time travel. That it's called time lapse. Time lapse. I, I got a pitch dope. for a sequel in this universe. So someone uh, that's in, like, the pet-sitting market starts cramming this cave full of people's, like, beloved pets to make them last longer. And then something <laughs> goes awry. Whack of antics ensue. <laughs> I kind of like a, uh, like a public restroom that follows, like, the same, <laughs> <laughs> same theory. <laughs> What's like, the end result of that? I don't know. You just, like, go in. Like, you go in. Imagine you go in to, like, take a piss. And then, like, next thing, there's this crazy future dude that comes in that's, like, all decked out, like, <laughs> Mad Max type shit, maybe. I don't oh, know. It's almost like a prank. Like, ha ha, oh. that was a time travel uh, bathroom. Cars don't have steering wheels anymore. Man, that's a, that's a fun <laughs> premise. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of, like, such casual time travel that you can, like, prank someone with it. <laughs> like, ha ha, you missed your kids growing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, your family's dead. <laughs> it's like the movie that um, uh, Kevin, not Kevin, the remote control movie, Click. Yeah. I don't know why I said Kevin yeah. randomly yeah. there. Yeah, Click. Because you, you know. can fast forward through time and you like, just fast forward. He's like, oh shit, I just fast forward my whole life on accident. <laughs> <laughs> Someone cuts you off and you just click them and they just lose a month of their life. <laughs> Damn. That would be gnarly. That would be gnarly. Why? Adam Sandler. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, as of right now, it feels like somebody just clicked this year. Yeah. <laughs> right? Seriously yeah. though, it's like the year that doesn't happen. <laughs> it's I'm like, it's like, can we just call next year 2020? Try this one again. Yeah. Like it's like, no, it's like it's only for timekeeping for us anyway. So like, let's just just fuck it. Just yeah. Just we'll throw just, it back. We'll let's run it back. <laughs> yeah. Let's run happened. this one back. Let's do a do over for this one. I feel like the people around our age doing entertainment stuff really have a twinkle in their eye for taking advantage of this time though. Oh, absolutely. It's kind of like in the game Risk. 
how the people that attack right away always lose. So yeah. you gotta fortify. Yeah. I try to remind myself to like for sometimes I over fortify and I don't go out and do anything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, now yeah. I'm so fortified when I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I used to love the game risk. But even in chess, like a lot of people don't even know you gotta castle king side or you can castle queen side. Gotta fortify that king. Yeah. So, you know. And every time you do that strategy in a chess game, if you actually like it's a basic thing, but if you play chess and a lot of people don't know you can castle in chess, they don't know that move. But like I'm one of the people that anytime I play a game, I have to read the instruction manual. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. like, I, I just have to because I'm just like, as long as you know the rules of the game, you'll be good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'll at least be actually playing. Yeah, so it's like when you castle king side, as long as you fortify the king, you could be super offensive in that game. I forgot yeah. about that being totally. a thing. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This gets oh, yeah. a. There you go. Boom. Castle tie bow on it. <laughs> castle. All right, so this is. More people, I think, should do this, but this jewelry store, going out of business, unfortunately, in Detroit. Um, so what they decided to do with a lot of their uh, merchandise is bury it and what? use it for a treasure hunt. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes! So, so is this jewelry store run by pirates? <laughs> yes. <laughs> did, they steal, did they steal the treasure to begin with? Opened a jewelry store, it didn't work, and it said, so we're just going to make buried treasure. Right. It is in Las Vegas, right? No, this is, they did it in... Uh, oh, no, it's just Las Vegas news. Yeah, they just had the story here, but the store was in Detroit. But there's a website called johnnystreasurequest.com <laughs> that these folks set up where you can look at, there's multiple different treasures of different values hidden. So basically, they're trying to get a Netflix special. Yeah, but it, <laughs> but it looks like but you have to like pay for the clues. So like that's their racket. Oh, it's almost like a like a raffle or something then, or like one of those charity things where they give away something expensive but they still make money somehow because the expensive thing was donated. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm like making a that raffle, really, really Yeah, so you have to like pay for the clues and then you know, if you right, find yeah. it. Yeah. So basically, the clues that you're playing for you're going to be on a wild goose chase because they probably sold all that jewelry for a really dirt price and they just have these clues they made on a laptop. Like, yeah. So like, I guess no one found it. We hit yeah, it too yeah. well. I'm not going to lie. Like Detroit, Detroit's, there's some gangsters in Detroit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah, totally. It's not like the city of honesty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. well, there, was that, there was that story recently about like this dude buried treasure like 10 years ago and someone finally found it. Yeah, we covered this a couple episodes ago. I think it was two episodes ago. It was like a 10-year hunt for this guy's treasure. People spent millions finding it. And then what? it was more worth more than that when they found it. It was, probably it was like, like worth a couple mil. And yeah. like not like an individual spent that much, but collectively lots of people spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to find it. I mean, 10 um, years is yeah. my entire music career. <laughs> like, these, these folks, these That's people. That's a good hunt. Yeah. Well, well like, shit, the last treasure wasn't found for 10 years. You know what? There's, like, shit in the ocean treasure that hasn't been found Well, I mean, the, the ocean forever. treasure is, like, that's the whole Netflix special that came out. I forget what it is. Like, it's not Hawaii, but it seems like they're all, like, in Hawaii or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely seems like Hawaii. There's a new, like, buried treasure. Yeah, buried, but it's, or, like, uh, his dad's looking for, like, this ship that has, like, 300 million in gold on it or whatever. Damn. And then, like, they're looking for it. I forget what the hell the name of this Netflix show is. I love the suspense of things like that. Outer Banks. There we go. Uh, Outer Banks. Is really? A show. Yeah. Oh, I spent some time uh, in the Outer Banks or outside North Carolina, like Harker's Island and stuff. Yeah. Uh, interesting. But yeah, the show's called Outer Banks, but it's not in America. They're like, oh, okay. they're by like, it's in the Caribbean. That I know. Of course, other countries can have Outer Banks, I just realized. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's like it the so Caribbean is where it's supposed thrilled. to be. Yeah. Of course, there's other countries. I just realized. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, uh, several of them um, hollered Bangladesh. That's what I was trying to say. If it ain't Bangladesh, it ain't fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Bangladesh. That's our, our news submarine sound regarding news submarining. Uh, just to explain the context of why I hit that instead of the button I meant to, that's what's going on. <laughs> Yeah. So another thing in news is that Kanye West is on the ballot in Oklahoma. So him being a joke for running is dead in the water. He's what are your, what are your thoughts running. on that? Well, he's on the ballot in one state. <laughs> well, it's, it's like it's the first state he's got on. But the fact yeah. that he's hopping on a ballot in the state means that he's actively doing it. Here's the thing. I was talking to my buddy about this the other day. It's not just Kanye West. Like the presidency, especially after Obama, 
became a president and the first lady. So oh, yeah, like, yeah, that's true. It's, so you got to think, like, even with Trump, Melina still, I mean, she's not that personable as far as, like, oh, the media goes. I like she's real, with She's a little bit private, yeah. but you got to think. Kanye West, his first lady, is the most popular female on the planet, Kim Kardashian, who just got her law degree. So Plus, Kim Car- yeah, Kim Car- her with law degree, she's done already, like, hella humanitarian things with that exactly. that are really valuable. Exactly, exactly. So. With, like, prison reform and things like that. That's so huge, because that's so. one of the things that the U.S. is the worst at. Yeah. And it's, it's like, modern slavery. Yeah. It's yeah. freaking awful the way the prison system works in this country. No, facts. <laughs> facts. Absolute facts. Commercially. Absolute we've, facts. We've gone off about it before, and there's plenty of people talking about it. But just, like, put a pin yeah. in that concept. Well, here's That's the thing. only what's, one what's, thing. And the thing is, too, it's like, people need to understand something, too. Because I know there's, like, a whole lot of, like, this racial angst and all this other stuff. When you look at a system and you see how the system is developed, you're going to have issues stem from that system. So if the prison system is a private corporation and they make money from prisoners, yeah. then the goal is going to be to lock people up. Yeah. So you're not yeah. going to have people in the street being nice. Because that doesn't They're not make gonna money. Be polite. Yeah. It's, not, it's not profitable <laughs> for them. Like, the goal is to lock people up. So when you have a system that's built that way, it doesn't matter if you go out here and all, like, the police thing. It's like they're just uh, a symptom of a larger problem. It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying for to think sure. like, like, like of an example. Like, for example, like, I, I'm a heavy cigarette smoker. So, like, if I'm smoking heavy cigarettes and then I try to do all this lung stuff, it's like, if I keep smoking cigarettes, shit ain't going to change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like, I could keep smoking cigarettes. Oh, I'm going to switch a black and mild for a Newport. Like, it's, it's not going <laughs> to change anything as far as the, the way the system goes. Like, the rest of the system is going to have fucked up shit happen. The same thing is happening, just a different brand. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's like, it's like, so it's like, that's where the main issue goes. And you don't really hear people bringing that up. Yeah. It's like. They'll, they'll talk about the symptom of it, but nobody wants to actually talk about why that symptom exists. Yeah. And that's, like, where you're actually going to solve problems. You're not going to solve problems from the symptoms. Like, the symptoms are going to pop up in different ways. We talked about uh, a couple episodes ago, probably more like three or four, uh, about something we scooped, like, two seasons ago. Okay, I need to make stop it. Stop making it braggy. But <laughs> there's these uh, computer systems that are used to, like, mathematically supposedly figure out someone's likelihood of committing a crime again and yeah. these recidivism recidiv- you know things there it's like foundationally flawed to try to do that to like uh, judge someone is not an individual oh, well, we, we, based we, on we, these outer circumstances the funny thing is there's so many like movies that predicted that like I think the first like yeah. major one was Minority Report but then oh, the yeah, other yeah. one was uh, 1984 yeah was one like, the new news on the it George, is the, the George Orwell yeah like that was like if you weren't like in their system then you slightly fell off they would like you know try to brainwash you in or eliminate you it's such so. an important guide <laughs> to the future that like everyone needs to be aware of yeah. to like vote responsibly and understand yeah. what they're even voting for with those well, blueprints that here's, Orwell here's made. the situation with voting right now though it's like I feel like that's even flawed for because sure. it's oh, like yeah. when I went down to like vote it's like this like I'm not trying to knock it or anything but it's people that really aren't that savvy or like they're mostly volunteers mm-hmm. yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's people with free time that really aren't doing anything so like their drive and hustle to make things work correctly isn't there like when there's no like i guess repercussions or accountability yeah, yeah for yeah. like the stuff that they're doing it doesn't actually like make any sense for the level and scale of the responsibility that's being placed upon them but no accountability for what they're doing for like counting votes or taking votes like yeah there's a lot of things that could go wrong on macro levels oh totally and there has yeah. been like even from you know you got states that are like closing down polling places for like counties that are like a couple hundred thousand people and they go from like 50 polling places to five exactly and so now one polling place is supposed to service like 65 well, thousand people that, and that was a big thing in um in in texas when yeah. they were uh when they were doing the uh democratic primaries like the college areas that had you know 10 20 thousand people that normally had like 150 polling places would be dropped on a five but suburban places or areas that would be towards certain candidates yeah they would have like no they'd have extra polling places so you go in and it'd be like a two-minute wait. 
but then the college areas they shut down at like seven and things like that. So have, it's 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 a it's a crazy thing that's going on right now politically. Well, have though. you guys have either of you gone to a caucus before? Yes, I actually was like, a super delegate. For, oh, were you? Uh, I was a super delegate for Bernie Sanders. Actually. Nice, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, d- like, caucuses in my mind are like the weirdest and worst fucking thing. No, absolutely. Like, because it's like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not short. It's like three no. hours, and you know how they did it. Like in Las Vegas, do you know how they actually break tiebreakers? In Las you have Vegas? to like the one I went to. They made each side like try to convince the person, so it quickly devolved into like a shouting, and it was very aggressive. Yep. So that's the first step. You have to try to convince. So there's there's two steps to it. You have one representative from each person that tries to bring more people to their side for the for the uh, delegates that qualify. Yeah. So for the politician that qualifies. So if you get like a certain amount of voters. Your, your politician qualifies, your job is to try to convert people whose politician didn't qualify. Yeah. So, yeah, so... That's weird, man. It was me versus Joe Biden. It was Bernie Sanders versus Biden. Oh, yeah. And, nice. like, I'll just be honest here. Like, a big issue with, with it is, like, a lot of, like, older people have their minds made up already. For sure. Yeah. So, like... Cause it was like I was going like like you should have saw like the birdie group is like all the hippie like you know it's like all the cool people like but ready to ride and like getting what's going on but then the guy who was out there like he's like you know it is about it's it's about us all coming together blue no matter who and then I was just like thinking in my head I was just like that's, that's your argument the, that's like who? yeah like literally that, like <laughs> I was like that 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 was the argument but we ended up not going to the final tiebreaker but there was a guy who was with our camp who was like yeah so. I'm a blackjack dealer, and he explained to me when Hillary was going against Bernie how it was, like, close, mm-hmm. that when the blackjack dealer came, the dealer drew the card, saw the card, and then after he looked at the card, said, this card's for Hillary. So he would, they would look at the card when it was drew and then call the card, like, call the name based on who he's, after he's, after he saw the card. Now, you're in Vegas. You know in blackjack, if you draw, let's say, an ace for your first card, and you go, oh, this is going to be for this person, your chances of winning just jumped up tremendously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get to call, who, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get to see the card first and right. then call if you want it or yeah. not <laughs> in blackjack. That so, would be the, that would ruin the game. <laughs> yeah, so he said that, like, he saw that. So after that, he was just, like, against everybody, and that's why he was for Bernie because he, like, saw that happen. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's just it's so weird, man, and it's, like, and it's, like, if you're trying to – yeah, the whole voting system in general is like so antiquated. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but I have to say we can't fix it by not participating. No, no, we, no. I'm yeah. not saying that we can't. I, I was there. You know it, what I'm saying? Like, at like, least it's I, like a corporate no, poll at the worst. No, no, no. I agree. <laughs> but the thing is, too, is like when you go there, though, I could see how it could be distraught, discouraging. Like, I was there for like three hours, and I'm just seeing all these. Dude, Super it was discouraging. Like, literally, I felt like I was in a Roman trial. They were like, <laughs> everybody for Bernie in the, the left corner. Everybody for Biden stand in this right yeah. corner. Everybody stand down here. Now we're going to count how many people are over there with a notepad counting how many people are yeah. standing in a corner. <laughs> See, oh, wait, I got to count nightmare. again. I got to count yeah, again. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, like, and, like, and it's like, this for three hours, I was like, this is And so everyone's stupid. fucking miserable. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, and then they do it on like, it was like, I think it was a Saturday that yeah, we went. Yeah, it's there on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, because sure. it's like, you know, most people can't go, but in Las Vegas, a Saturday's damn near a Monday. Yes. Yeah, so sure. when we went, it was like, Yo, this is so messed up. I was like, most people I know have to work on Saturdays. For sure. Yeah. Like, they, they work Saturdays. Like, <laughs> Saturdays is not an off day in this city. It's yeah, so, yeah, totally. <laughs> so rigged. Yeah. So, so it's crazy. just, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of things that's, that's awkward right now. Fight something, the power! You, something I love about America is the same thing that I think is one of the things wrong with America. But it's one of those, like, devils that we know. And that's how corporate the government is. We've yeah. had so many generations of voting for smaller and smaller government and more and more hands-off business that it's almost like you, people have to die before the government regulates a business or someone has to, like, made off before they step in and regulate things. But on the bright side, at least it means that no matter how rigged either party is, like, to so the same corporations, it's basically like, oh, do you want Coke or Diet Coke? It's like, here's your two flavors. We've got our hands in the pots of either one. It's just a way of dividing us so that we all hop on one exactly. of these two parties and don't pick an independent one. Well, not um, only that, it's not only just to hop on two parties and not pick an independent one. It's 
that they can control the chess game. Like Buck For Minister, sure. Buck Minister has one of like my favorite quotes, and it's, <gasps> "If you want to defeat a system, you're not going to defeat a system by fighting it head on. You're going to defeat a system by replacing it with newer and better systems." For so sure. like, and getting in there. Yeah. No. Exactly. So it's like to try to like beat the two party system within the two party system is never going to work. Yeah. Mm. Like it's never going to work to try to attack it from that direction. But I think that, like, honestly, I think the person that, for politicians that said the most that I like to hear was probably Andrew Yang. I know. He's like, my favorite, yeah, too. Like, like after, like, because I saw him all speak live. I'm not just guessing on some shit I've seen on the Internet or somebody mm-hmm. made a post that I agreed with. Like, I saw them all give their speeches uh, at Bellagio because my, my girl was working for Bernie Heavy. Mm-hmm. So I went to all this stuff just to see what it was about. But we got to see all of them speak in Nevada. I, th- I forget mm-hmm. what it's called, like, Battle of the state or whatever but that's irrelevant but long story short when i saw everybody speak i could tell you right now that everybody seemed like bullshit elizabeth warren was probably like the one of the biggest like patriot like patronage like false like patronizing yeah patronizing like just super bullshit and i I, you could just look at her like when you see somebody speak in front of you and you like hearing them talk to you not through a screen but like even if it's a prepared speech whatever when you just see them in person you could tell real quick Full of shit or like yeah, some yeah, real yeah. shit. Like Bernie, his message is like 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 Joe Rogan said, his message has been the same for like fucking a hundred years. Like yeah, right. shit's <laughs> never changed. So like there's value in that. Biden, he has dementia, like hundred percent. He said we're gonna have greenhouse emissions down to zero by the year thirty thirty five. I will never forget that because I'm like, did he just say thirty thirty five? Yes, he said thirty thirty five and I looked at him, I was like, did he just say thirty yeah, he said thirty thirty five. That's uh what my girlfriend said. I was just like, yo. Did nobody catch yeah. that? That he just said we're gonna have greenhouse emissions down by thirty three. I was like, that's like eleven hundred years from now, bro. <laughs> Not only that, like, yeah. if we don't have greenhouse emissions down in eleven hundred yeah. years, yeah. we ain't here, bro. Like, right. <laughs> like there's no planet. Not only that, but we're like, we're fucking Mars at that right, point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need to reduce greenhouse emissions, but we don't have to go all the way to zero. That's yeah. literally impossible. No, exactly. The Earth is not zero without us. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So he's like zero by thirty thirty five, and like, I'm just like. Wait, this guy's well, just on. talking on his ass. Well, I think, I think <laughs> so he's so out your ass to even talk about like no, going to no, zero. No, no, no. See, guys, he's onto something. See, <laughs> oh, okay. because by by that time, humans will be extinct. <laughs> 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 no greenhouse gas emissions, yo. Oh man, yo, we figured it out, dog. <laughs> it's Big just it, to me, I see that, and I feel like um, the party is getting greedy with trying to force on us the candidate that's going to be the easiest to manipulate. When someone like Andrew Yang, I feel like, can actually represent us and actually talk well, here's the, the thing. corporate thing and, that you and, need to do. Andrew Yang's not just a corporate thing. Andrew Yang understands tech. Yeah. And yeah, we're in a technological the world. For and sure. he's the only one that actually understands tech. Like, I hate this. When I worked at Apple, like, people that are older, they don't understand tech like that. I mean, look at it now. Like, even young kids I see now, like, little six, seven-year-olds, barbecue and stuff, they're on iPads and using computers, like, ripping through them. This shit didn't exist when I was six years old. Yeah, I was still yeah, yeah. ringing doorbells, playing capture the flag on you know the street and stuff like that. Now it's like they're on Fortnite. They got headsets on. They're yeah. freaking playing video games, talking to right. 100 people at a time. Like so, it's it's a whole different technological world. So if I'm seeing it at that level, and then juxtapositioning to when like television didn't even exist when some of these people were born, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. They were like listening to radio when yeah. they were six or seven years old <clears throat> to try to like run the world now. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, they don't, don't like, even it, understand like, how people are communicating now. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Like Donald Trump doesn't understand Twitter. Like, <laughs> like, like he's lucky his Twitter didn't get hacked. If you guys want to go into that for one sure. about Twitter oh, getting yeah, hacked, yeah. the huge hack where they got cryptocurrency for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, but I, well, it's it's uh, Andrew Yang Yang gang all day. Like he, oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're look literally. It's so funny because we're using some of his pol- him and Bernie's policies right now. Yeah. Like universal basic income, the six hundred dollar stimulus. Oh, whatever they're doing, like the same. It's like, adjacent to that. That's for sure. literally the same thing as universal basic income. Mm-hmm. Like it's literally the same thing. Yeah. Like you're just not taxing social media corporations; they're just printing it out of thin air. <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that brings me to something optimistic that I think that uh, you can take away from this: that even though you might see this as a system that's like in corporate hands with either party you go to, still by making choices, making the party oh, choice yeah. that you make at any moment. Uh, picking people and picking policies, your vote still is as good as a survey. And every powerful corporation tunes into their customers and takes surveys and oh, tries to make the customer happy. No, absolutely. So absolutely. There's, there's still that motivation. It's just uh, 
playing that. Like yeah, how yeah. how much well, can we too, be loud? Dis- about and then voter and like voter disenfranchisement. You know, like mm. yeah. most people that are working that are working class that have to like actually do shit don't have three hours in their day to go sit at a caucus no. yeah. or like do all this other like nonsense. And it's not just a caucus. Like <clears throat> they canceled the um, Democratic convention, so I didn't have to go to that in May. But it's like if I didn't show up, if you like the delegates don't show up, then you lose all those votes. So like Bernie was beat because people didn't show up. And like, as like a, people disappeared, <laughs> and they didn't a, show up to the to the like. If they would have showed up, then Hillary actually would have lost. But the people oh, like man. Bernie had won, but people didn't show up. Oh, the super so if you don't, yeah, if you don't show, if you didn't show, they changed that rule. Votes. It changed that rule this year all of a sudden. Jeez. But if you didn't show up, you don't get the vote. So you understand how the system works. It's like, damn, you better have like fucking a good three or four weeks mm. of time available to like yeah. go here or replace here. So like. Yeah. Seeing how that whole system work, I was like, well, it's geared towards people that are retired or, like, have a lot of time on their hands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, a lot of people totally. ain't got time like that to be, like, out there making decisions. But it's like, yo, that time you put in makes literally life or death decisions. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like. And the amount that people were allowed for Andrew Yang helped some of his policies happen, even though we didn't get him. It's never a loss when people hype policies and government stuff that they want to see get a certain way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it gets so it in young. front of the people I mean, that will like, actually what, make the, a thing. Trump's, what, 78 right now? Like, Yang's in, like, his 40s. He has yeah. time. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, he has good two, three good decades. Point. Yeah. He has two or three decades. Especially after run. being proven right repeatedly about yeah, things. Dude, yeah, dude. When he broke down artificial intelligence and automation for jobs mm. and how that was what caused Hillary to lose the Midwest because she basically sure. was like everything's fine and he's yeah. like yo they just lost like 10 million jobs because of automation everything is not fine <laughs> all from her yeah, not yeah. talking about their issues just yeah, ignoring yeah, them yeah. yeah but she's like she's like you know classic case bullshit politician you know what I'm saying like like that's not even a question at this point <laughs> you know right. she like she cheated and that's what cheaters never win like mm-hmm. she cheated worse than the other person yeah so like that's, <laughs> that's a perfect way of putting it yeah, <laughs> like yeah. she cheated worse mm-hmm. hope yeah. we got a little bit of dirt for Russia she like literally like changed the number like the score, yeah. it was like the end of the game score, and then it was like, now nah, you know what? We're gonna make it uh, thirty-three twenty-eight. I don't, I don't, I don't I'm, we're, not, we're just gonna change the score. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen. She lost the popularity competition too, and like Trump, uh, it's it's hard for us to see on the West Coast, and being so in this yeah. like left bubble, which yeah. is also weird because I grew up in that Schwarzenegger time too, when it got so bad in. And this is like speaking as someone that leans left naturally. Of course, I try to be centrist on things. And we had to go super Republican in California to get over like a bunch of extreme decisions in that direction. At the same time, the nation's going the other direction. It's just the weirdest thing. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a Terminator. So <laughs> like him and Jesse the Body Ventura, like they should have been running for president. Like yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ventura. It's a Terminator, the, the Body Ventura. The fact right. that you have to be born in America to run for president is, is kind of silly. No, nah, I mean, I can, I can understand that. I though. get it. Because, like, you got to think, man, in some countries, dude, there's spy programs. Like, just think about K-pop, right? Oh. Like, think about how much, like, you have to be born into that. Like, since you're a kid, you're groomed to be a K-pop star. A K-pop star. That's a great point. So, I mean, imagine, angle. yeah. So, nice. I, I always think from, like, the, uh-huh. the, the, the crew, like, the overlord side. It's <laughs> like, so if they're trained to just do K-pop, imagine what they would do if they could have a leader for another country. Uh-huh. Just imagine that training. And like how good that person would be some at subverting. Like program, some kids in like. We would get like the ultimate the hype. L- living cyber president yeah. from Korea take over. Yeah, straight Dude. up. Wow. Uh, what if it's happening right now? That's why K-pop is attacking Trump. The next thing we're gonna get. <laughs> well, okay, Dude, as K-pop a invasion. producer, you can look at K-pop and just see the amazing like. Uh, just they check every box of what's a hip technique. Oh no! Every, it's 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 so <laughs> scientific. It's, yeah. it's it's ridiculous. Like even how the kids look. Yeah. You know, like, you're literally groomed to be a K-pop star. Like, they have no life. Like, because I had a buddy who was on, uh, he did photography for one of the groups called Monster X. Mm. And he's like, he's not even allowed to take photos unless he's given permission. And he's like, it felt like it was a Yakuza telling me to do it. So, like, if I took a photo and tried to post it without their permission, I'd disappear oh, along man. with the Damn. photo. Yeah. So, like, it's like it's like some serious, serious shit. That would be crazy if, like, Yakuza actually does have some investment in that. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Absolutely. The like, amount of psychology involved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, here's the thing, man. I feel like anytime you're dealing with entertainment at a very high level, like, it might not be the mafia directly, but the music industry started with the mafia. 
Like, dudes would run outside with Tommy guns shooting up movie theaters. Like, yeah. the, the, the record industry literally started with gangsters. Yeah, so it's true. like, the, like you always have to remember that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm from Southwest Philly, been around some gang shit, so it's like, I'm, it's, it's chill. I'm not getting shot at, you know, not, nowadays. Like, you nobody's know, out here shooting at people, so it's a lot easier. But yeah. it's still, you, know, you still got to be on your P's and Q's. Like, 100%. 100%. Totally. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. And now we're about to have a music artist as president, Kanye West, Yeezy 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I got mixed feelings about this. Because, like, I feel like uh, he was super excited about Trump because of the marketing. I think that's where he fell in love with Trump the most. Like, if you can market this well, you really can change the world. And the stars he had in his eyes for Trump, like, I, I love the, the, like, almost childlike innocence of the, the love of that power, but also I feel like Kanye West's love of power is altruistic. I don't think he wants power just for power's sake. Then he, like he Hardly said it, though, he I, said it, no one man should have all that power. Yeah, but, but he's still, <laughs> I just, I feel like I can but relate the, to Kanye being like more than one person in his head. Oh, like definitely. there's a Kanye that does want the power and is going to think it's delicious. Yeah. And there's a Kanye that but wants to here, do good here, with it. Here's the thing too, though, like the person you see on camera and the person that he actually is from all the musicians and stuff and people that I've worked with, it's almost, I'd say like 99% of the time, it is never the same person. I'd so imagine. when they get, they get the cameras in front of them, like you're not getting the real them. Yeah. Like, like being in the studio, I'll get the real person and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. But like, like, like Riff Raff is intelligent as fuck. He might be one of the smarting marketing guys I've ever talked to. You know what I'm saying? It seems like Goofy O, Dale D'Antoni, but like that's all like an a- it's an oh, yeah. act and it's a marketing mm-hmm. ploy. It's part of a larger you know system. But he's intelligent as fuck. So it's like just seeing that on that level, I was just like, if Kanye West is getting promotion by going up on stage saying it should have went to this person, it should have went to this person. It's like, oh no, he's that way. He's crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy. But it's like, I mean, what is his number? Lots of like really intelligent in people are yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's like so. It's like you know. It's 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 a real questionable thing, but like I said before, after Obama, the first lady was given a lot more attention. Yeah, that's a powerful point. And you gotta remember, too. this is the Kardashians. Mm. This is, do you know how? I think they have over like a billion followers with their family. Yeah. Like literally, like one sixth of the planet follows them. A hundred percent of the people know their name. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? And yeah. they're they're not trying to sell bunk healthcare products like Gwyneth Paltrow. Hey, or we <laughs> went from <laughs> Donald running. Trump wasn't even that high of a rated show okay mm. right he just he had a okay tv show where he said you're fired <laughs> that's it that that's it that's it folks the most people don't even know he owns hotels and shit like they just yeah. know him from the tv show the apprentice oh he's a good businessman not really but he's great at saying stuff that people want to hear yeah yeah exactly and that's, that's how he won is saying stuff that people wanted to hear exactly a lot of people we know didn't want to hear big chunks of it that other people wanted to hear that voted exactly exactly <laughs> right. and the thing is he hit those chunks that weren't going to vote the other way yeah so like he just had to well he hit a bunch of people that would have voted left that were totally disappointed in hillary's corruption well i mean he honestly stole tons of democrats i mean honestly because she cheated bernie so badly yeah it was such a bad look. like it was so it wasn't even like a s- small burn yeah it was like a straight eye poke and then kick him in the balls it made and then be like i won by knockout you know what yeah. i'm saying like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trump, trump got <laughs> votes from people that wanted just to see the it all burn yeah he yeah, got the yeah, totally yeah, disenfranchised yeah, people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They were so disenfranchised. They're like, uh, but there's still a person who went to the caucus. They did all that stuff. Yeah. So they're like, all right, we just got screwed over. Screw the system. We're going to go Trump. Like, we're just going to see what happens. Those same people at this point, they know what they're going to get with Trump again. Yeah, yeah. So they're over it. You know what? Kim Kardashian could be in the White House? What the, let's see what the fuck that turns into. <laughs> fuck, might as well, man. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So simulation. we're right in the middle, and it's a perfect time to reveal that this first half of the episode, as well as being on RadioVegas.rocks, has also been on the radio station's YouTube and Twitch and Facebook profile. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm going to post that on the... uh, I'm going to post the continuous video on GreasyConversation.com, but we'll kind of reintroduce ourselves to the Greasy streams after this commercial break. And I was just going to throw out there, too, we got to get on the Spotify game. 
guys got to figure that out. We're on Spotify. We oh. just need to hype it more. No, no. Uh, yeah. They're going to allow video starting in September. Oh. That's why Joe Rogan's going there in September because they're allowing gotcha. video now. It's oh, that's not why just he's audio. Not there yet. Okay. That's why he's not there yet yeah. because the infrastructure doesn't allow it. But they're going to allow for videos mm. on Spotify. That's it'll the next on, step. It'll be on restream.io right away, and that's how we do it. If you're looking a little inside baseball at doing this, Restream.io yeah. helped it all come together for me. Yeah, no, I've been I've been like dabbling into it, but I just like rewired and built up a new studio recently yeah. that's still like still building up a little bit. Um, yeah, still got some more building to do, but you know, COVID shutting everything down. <laughs> right. You know, and then they're saying that we're gonna get hit with a second wave, but then I'm seeing all the shit and people are saying like nobody else is wearing masks but Americans right now. We're the only country that's quarantined, so it's like. Well, because they, well, they did all that shit like two months ago, all the other countries, while we're still arguing about <laughs> if we should wear masks. You know? Yeah, so it's yeah. got us on the long train. Everyone knew from the beginning America was going to have the longest time dealing with this because of how independent individuals are in this country. That's just how for better for worse, you know? Yeah, and not just independent. It's just like motherfuckers are just like, yo, fuck that shit. I'm going outside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, rebellious, I should yeah, say, yeah, even more yeah. specifically. I mean, Florida right now, man, like those pools, those, those beaches were looking. Like, they were jumping, though. I've seen, like, all these house parties. Yeah. And I had a buddy that came back. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's just like, dude, Florida right now is fucking popping. He's like, Vegas is boring as fuck right now. He's like, there ain't <laughs> yeah. shit to do. He's like, everything's closed. There's no pool. He's like, let's well, stay here. We're California Junior, so we're going to be, like, extra paranoid. Yeah, you're right. For sure. We're definitely California Junior. <laughs> For now. Yeah. Right. For now. Once we get a football team here, though, man, I'm telling you guys, we might, we might right. come. I'm glad you're optimistic about it. I'm, like... <laughs> optimistic about it too just kind of like why well, why not be put it this way las vegas was incorporated as a city i think like even later than hawaii or something like that like this city, i think that's right i think the city is like young as shit this was the last state to be added yeah. before hawaii and yeah like like it's Alaska. like this is like this this it's like literally this is like the wild west until like the 60s like yeah it, it was it was not like even part of the country until no. recently, right. so. Well, most of the state is government test land. It was like, this yeah. is where we're going to crash planes. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like we're going to crash planes and drop atomic bombs, right. like, yeah. literally, like if, because it was that isolated. The and least valuable right. land. Yeah, th- think about it. <laughs> if Area 51 was built here, <laughs> that means there wasn't shit here for no. a very long time. Yeah, and they didn't expect anyone <laughs> yeah, to ever live yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And you have so, to drive uh, miles to yeah. get even from the fence of Area 51. <laughs> yeah, 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 so it's like if they put like the most secret base here that didn't even come out until the 90s because they're like too many people live here now so we gotta like let people know there's a base there because we just made another one so it's like we got a new secret base yeah apparently <laughs> it's in the mountains in colorado so I the, totally the, t- the tv show uh space force with michael scott apparently that is actually a thing where the space force is located like that like a sense. mountain base where they have like tech that's like not oh, yeah. accessible colorado's yeah. got all the mountain bases i think that's where the there's a like an underground Mormon genealogy database? No, I, I don't think it. I, To my knowledge right now, until I see it with my own eyes, I'm 99% positive it exists. Because I've every time I've done tours out there and I caught Ubers, like I've always just asked like questions just to people that work at stores. <laughs> like, oh, you born and raised here? Yeah. And then I'll just ask the question, like just, just passing through. So the knowledge I've accumulated is two things. One, Ancestry.com is owned by the Mormon church. Oh, yeah. So, but when you go out there, there's more Ancestry.com locations than 7-Elevens. And that's when I was like, this is some weird shit. Like, you'll be on one side of the street, there's an Ancestry.com. And directly across the street, there's an Ancestry.com. At the corner, there's an (laughs) Ancestry.com. So they're literally just collecting DNA out here. When we we, uh, we were Mormons (laughs) back in the day. Yeah. And yeah, the church is really obsessed with uh, genealogy and family records. Yeah. An extreme. yeah, it's funny because the the motivation Man. behind it is so innocent. All they want to do is dunk someone else in water while saying that person's name. That's all yeah. they want with these names. No, no, I know, <laughs> but it's the it's the it's the because they can. But put, history, human history is important. Anyways. Yeah, but no, the thing is though, it's like they do it based on religion. But your genealogy doesn't tell you your religion. That was my biggest thing with that. So it's like, oh, it's like, oh, you were related to so and so who was this religion. So we can do a mock baptism by baptizing this baby in water that has DNA in it, and you're baptized, or this person is now baptized. It, it's some. It's, it's well, there's weird. no DNA involved in the doctrine because it's yeah. all pre-DNA knowing yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, and, but, but it's it is like, funny. You're right that like they don't <laughs> care what 
religion the person used to be. Yeah. No, they're, they're, <laughs> just gonna, they're just going <laughs> to baptize like every every <laughs> dead person is Mormon now. We're exactly. Just, we're, we're doing it. That's what I'm saying. You can't <laughs> stop me. <laughs> Pretty much. You have to have a family member that's Mormon to like do it for you, though. At least there's not a lot of. Actually, no. I was going to say like you don't have your your relatives don't get baptized just like out of the blue. But I think if they're part of like some war or get attention or something. Like, I guarantee all, all, I know the, is a all the nine living victims, people have baptized them for yeah, the dead, for, for sure. For, that's what I'm saying, Anyone bro. So, like, and here's my thing, man. Like, the way they're stockpiling DNA in a mountain, you know what I mean? I don't like, think there's DNA in it, though. They, they, is that's it? what Ancestry.com no, is. They, they do your DNA. Oh, oh, I forgot Ancestry. Okay, right, never mind. And there's together. corporations that, like, have literally like, copyright, like, millions and millions of genes they found. I was thinking of 23andMe. Yeah, yeah. I forgot Ancestry.com is doing that also. Yeah. yeah. The gene time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Best best believe they ain't just like yeah. That's cool. forgetting about it. Yeah. They're, they're not just getting your DNA and it's like chilling. There's probably like clones in that goddamn yeah. mother. Like, who yeah. knows? They're like, who knows, man? There's a clone clone Earth right now. I mean, yeah. I've just, never I've never done Ancestry.com just because I've served too many people that like, yo, I sent my dog stuff in and it came back as like, you know, whatever. So it's like, <laughs> when you hear stuff like that, and it's like they're just sending stuff back, it's like, yo, the goal is to get the DNA. Like, if you're just giving people information back, you don't give a fuck what their DNA is. You don't <laughs> yeah. care where the fuck they came from. You don't give a fuck. You can t- tell them whatever they want to hear. Like, they, yeah. they, it's like, send your DNA with a picture. What does he look like? I uh, will just say, okay. <laughs> because the owner was what came back. You get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like when they said a dog's DNA. Like, if they actually did test, it'd be like, this isn't human DNA. No, right. it came back like German and fucking Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fucking their dog's hair. Like, well, my dog was, my dog was related to... And it wasn't a German Shepherd. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> my dog was related to Alexander the Great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Exactly. That's crazy. So it's like, I mean, the goals of stockpile DNA, it's like, you know, it, who knows, man? It could be freaking some space aliens that are just like... This is fucking great. They're paying us and we're getting their DNA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love that idea. Uh, <laughs> it's fucking just, just dumb as fuck, man. Right. We're getting their DNA for free. What the other oh, shit's man. worth money? <laughs> <laughs> They're giving us their currency and giving us our currency. Right. The universal currency is DNA, man. You got to have that biological material. <laughs> Nobody cares about bills. We, <laughs> dude, we are killing it on the premises today. We, I mean, like, you are bringing hilarious premises to the table. If you like this, enjoying this, randos on RadioVegas.rocks YouTube, thanks for joining us, and Jay's Facebook profile, I encourage you to, um, in the next break, head on over to GreasyConversation.com and enjoy the second half of this episode. And, of course, you've been tuned into the whole thing in the recording. Thank you so much. And uh, So we're going to pay, pay some bills. Pay some Bob Thorntons and we'll be right back. Hey ladies, when it's not raining men, it's always raining tacos at Juan's, Flaming Fajitas, and Cantina during their daily happy hour from 3 to 7. If things get a little too hot from their authentic Flaming Fajitas, you can visit their outdoor dining area and cool down with Juan or Dos Corona Ritas. If you're feeling spicy, be sure to order one of my personal favorites, their fresh tableside guacamole, which goes perfectly with their homemade chips and salsa for one or two. Visit Juan's Flaming Fajitas and Cantina on Facebook or in the real world at 9640 West Tropicana. Proud supporter of the Rock and Comedy Show for two years and counting. Hi, I'm always on the go, and I need the one thing to help me keep moving. Zip fizz. That's right. It's an all-natural energy mix that comes in a tube. I can keep one in my pocket or my purse. So many great flavors, such as fruit punch, grape, orange soda, plus no hard crash because there is no...